It must be so loud. Is it working? Am I streaming on Twitch yet? Am I streaming on Twitch? I don't see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler's so funny. I hope he gets qualified. Well, he should be qualified. No, actually, I don't know. He better qual. The only reason why I like Tetris now is him. <laughs> And he puts on banger musics. Anna! There we go. That's what I was mainly waiting for. Anna, are you ready for today? Because you better be. I hope he calls. <gasps> Hi, Shelly! Welcome in. Oh my gosh, you guys popped in quick. Let me tell you. It's never expecting this quick. Okay, so while I'm put, I have Tyler in the background, I'm going to just talk about what we're doing today. So, today we do have, um, did I, wait, did I not hear anything? Hmm? I waited since I told history. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. That's why I started five minutes early. You should be happy. Well, four minutes early. So, the plans for today is, um... I got Killer Frequency. I also got another game that I thought would be cool to play, which is called This Bed We Made. It's a murder investigation, I think. And um, But you're a maid, which will be cool. And then I got the other games that we talked about, like The Kindman Red Remedy. This is a game I have been wanting to try because I, I think one of my first videos... Oh, okay. Am I on... Yeah, I'm fine. One of my first videos on um on YouTube, I think was Let me see. I think it was something called Ravenous Devils. No, it was Phasmophobia. But then I did Ravenous Devils. And this game is fun. It is so much fun. I wish they made a long a longer game of it. Oh, Ravenous is so good. But I was watching Tur Tyler because <laughs> he's qualifying and he puts on some banger music. I love Tetris. Only, only when he plays. I never watch Tetris other than that. But wish him the best. Can you play That's Not My Neighbor? What's, what's That's Not My Neighbor? Hold on, I'm going to leave... I'm gonna leave him there. I'll look up That's Not My Neighbor. <laughs> oh. Are you talking about this game, Revolving Potato? Also, hi. Weird, the VODs were muted. The VODs were muted? Okay, you're one. On Twitch? Because it could be, like, the music. Yeah, I don't know if eight this game? Eight. What is this game? Uh, oh, okay. Where's the about me? This game. Don't worry. This game's not a virus. That's what a game with a virus would say. Not you, but my computer. Which for some reason. Oh. What? What's? What's this game about? Oh, here we go. Here we go. The doppelganger detection department needs you. There's a vacancy for the doorman position in your building. Since you need the money, you can't find a job. You have no choice. It's 1955, and uh, for unknown reasons, doppelgangers are more common than normal, so the DDD has taken action on the matter. Sorry, mute you. Um, your job will, will be to allow or deny entry of subjects who request entry to the building. It seems easy, but be careful. You can't overlook detail because you could be food for doppelgangers. Oh, that's cool. I already like the art. So is it like a uh, uh, Art Stotska? Because I love art. I listen for some reason. I love these stupid little games where like 
you play as a bouncer or you play as a security guard. Because I have 100% uh, glory to Artstotska. What's my hair doing back there? I have 100% glory to Artstotska. I have um, 100%, what is it? The bouncer games? I forgot what it's called. Not tonight. I have 100% not tonight one and two. They Those games are bangers, especially with the music. And then I'm working on... I haven't streamed it just because, like, I don't know if, like, anyone would watch because I feel like it's really, like, boring gameplay unless you're super into roleplay. But I've been working on Contraband Police and I've been trying to 100% that. I've been really, really trying. Really close to 100%ing it. Um, but yeah, I am so down to, to look into this game even more. Maybe um, next stream because... I personally don't have my card info saved to this website, and I don't know my card info, so I'd have to ask Corey, and Corey is not here right now. So, yeah, I could totally... Oh, look at that. They get creepy. This would be really fun. Oh. All right. So, the plan is... Goodbye, Tyler. Wish you the best. The plan is, is we are going to do... I guess, I mean, which ones do we want to do first? Maybe we'll just do Killer Frequency first because a certain someone's been badgering me about it. I gotta find it. I have, like, all these tabs. Oh, you know what? I could just search it. It's not free? No, it's $3. <laughs> all right, but let's put on Killer Frequency. I don't know how long this game is going to be. Um, I have, I am going to say now... So there's transparency. I have played this game before. Not played. I've not played this game before. I just bought it today. I have, um, what do you say, seen the gameplay of this game before. I have not seen how to like 100% do it, but I've seen someone's version of it. And that was like months ago because this game is like, what, a year old now? Um, so I want to do my best on trying to keep everyone alive. And I'm going to delve in more on the details. Um, so this is going to be, this is going to be really, really good. It went into commercial mid details. I'm telling you right now, I have put those ads to the lowest actual possible. I think I need to turn off. Where's my, is it because my controller is plugged in? Yep, it was. Um, I need to like keep editing it because I'm tired of like the ads starting like right when people join. I think that's kind of annoying. So let's see. Subtitles on when the text panels will automatically display showing plain text. Um, I think that's fine. Windowed mode, V-Sync. I think everything looks good and my game and face is running fine. I have noticed that now I have to attempt that <laughs> after after that last game. Alright, uh, so yeah. Killer Frequency! Let's get into it. New game. And yell at me if the volume's bad. Because if it's bad, then I want to make sure that... I'm just going to raise it just... Hoping it's good. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hello. Wazed for movement, okay. Man, this is sensitive. Ooh. <laughs> All right, I get it. Anything in here? Why am I opening this? Uh, no reason. Pick up objects. Yoink. Throw it! Break it! Oh. Oh, is there anything on there? Is that legible? There's a lady on there. Bottle on her. Uh, okay. Oh, R to throw. Ooh, you're getting it, bottle. Ooh, you're getting it. Hey! What? Hey! Man. Alright. Uh, throw, drop, place. Cool. Anything in here? What am I doing? Am I a hobo? Okay, put that back. Did someone like flush their toilet? What was that? Oh my gosh, that's so loud. Hello? Is anyone here? Ooh, ooh. 
Okay. I did that. I don't know why I needed to do that, but I did it. Hello? Alright. Nothing. Anyone down there? No. Okay. What is this pipe monster? What is this home safety hotline? Why is there just like pipe gurgling? Is there a ghost? What's going on here? I didn't realize this was a game full of just ghosts and random noises. Am I dealing with a hob? Uh, inspecting objects. No, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. What? Why do I need a crouch? Uh, why do I need a crouch? I... There's no reason for this game for wanting me to crouch. Anyone out there? No. Oh. How about no? How about we go in the opposite direction and keep looking first? Is that door closed? Does that door even have a handle? What kind of door doesn't have a handle? To inspect. Hold. Hold. And. Wait. Press E. Ah. K fam. It's a pretty decent mug. Can I keep it? It's mine now. For my coffee. Oh. You can't scare me! Wait, why is that closed? What? I literally... This was just open! <laughs> what? I just had that open. Hello? Did you close? Freaking pipe monsters. All right. Okay. So did this... Why is it... What? It, it's just locked. I think I was supposed to walk in there. <laughs> was, I supposed to, was I supposed to walk in here and I didn't? Uh, main menu? What the fr- Oh my gosh, alright. Alright, it's good to easily mess up this uh, early. Alright, let's just- let's just beeline for that door. No- No distractions. I'll power this on for some reason, though. Where are my whistles? I hear no whistles! Oh, you could be above me, too. Ooh. Ooh. You above me? Watching over me? Alright, let's go in. There we go! <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh. Oh. I know what's gonna happen. You can't scare me! You can't! Ooh. Hello. Uh oh. Where is he? Ooh Hi. How are you? You doing good? Whoa! It still scared me. <laughs> it still scared me. <laughs> Alright, that's it. That's the end of the game, guys. You hear something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling. Mm -hmm. or, I don't know. Do you hear the motorcycle outside? Or is, is this a joke? No, I, <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. Your mouth isn't moving. <laughs> I know what a cat is. But, I mean... Does Gallows Creek have a straight cat problem or something? Not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Why was I so slow? We have to do these checks. Every time. <laughs> and do you have <laughs> to call on that? Reggie uh, okay. us to check the equipment for each show. Oh. Pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want to. Wait, what? Oh. Okay. Alright. 
Sorry, what was I supposed to do? Let's do the checks. All right, fine. Let's get through this. All righty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Yeah, let's not be boring. Welcome, folks. We're about to hit some tubular rents. Let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy. <sighs> okay. Uh, records. Yeah, rec. Ooh, here we go. We got the hangups. That sounds uh, cool. Forest, you need to grab a record and Ooh, stick it hold on, on. The turntable. Hold on, hold on. I want the storm right. Put this on the floor. I want the storm riders. That looks like a pizza box. Hit me. Hit. The record box is on the left, and the record player is on the right. Pick a record and stick it on the turntable. Did you not hit play? She is so rude. Got it. Great. Now turn it off. What? I just. But I just. Oh. All right. Up next, phone line button. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. <sighs> line one. Line one. There we All go. All right, Peggy. Ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Yeah. It's a riot. Yeah. Right. And button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. The you mean the producer line? Like Press said, for Peggy. Peggy. That sounds button. so weird. <laughs> Press for Peggy. My help during the show. Hmm. Is there a Peggy mute button? They haven't invented it yet. Good. Now, come on. The Peggy button is the third one on the phone line. Pressing it. I labeled it for you. <sighs> Got it. Press for Peggy. This is your brain, Forrest. <laughs> Sorry I made you such an unfun, unfun turkey. turkey. <laughs> That's my favorite line. <laughs> unfun <laughs> turkey. That's an easy one. Uh, is it? Wait. What's a, what's a sound blaster? Sound. Sound blaster. Front of the desk to the right. Right. Front. This thing? There's no sound. Am I supposed to put something in it? It says front of the desk to the right. Here, I'll it's put... It's the thing covered in buttons. Oh, this thing! There we go. Oh. All is good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. Woo! Seems to be all working. We done? Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? Yeah, I should not encourage you. I knew you had a fun side. <laughs> it's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. <laughs> okay, you're live in three, two... What am I talking into? This thing? Ooh! The screen. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Screen. <laughs> Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Is that gum? Guess that Ew. screen. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works I'm going to play you a scream, then you call and guess that scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or. Discover the corpse of a loved one. <laughs> That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Peggy, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Uh, tape. Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing That's it not it. Peggy, 
Let's be real. That's not it. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It. Oh, my bad. a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need to scream tonight, Forrest, and you're the one at the mic, so. Ah, my bad. Uh, I'll do it. I'm, I'm excited. I'll scream. Uh, I hate what I've become. I used to go out all across America, and now I'm just screaming into a mic in a backwater town. Jeez. Come on, Forrest, just do it. That's enough dead air. Forrest, don't be a bore. Come on now. Scream and let it rip. Oh God. I'm ready. I want to scream. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close. Dang it. And then call in to guess that scream. Uh, the perturbed yeti, the falling from the cliff, or the drowning. Perturbed yeti! <laughs> well, folks, there you have it. Guess it! Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Ew. So just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guest. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Music! There we go. Should I introduce a song? Oh. Let Storm Riders take you on a rock and roll ride with the Glam Jam. Oh, God, Forrest. Amazing. Heck yeah, it was. Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? <sighs> lighten up, Forrest. Yeah, lighten up. My oh my gosh. Dang it. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. I got it! Music off. Come on. All right, uh, call one. Hello. Welcome to one eighty nine point sixteen. The scream, caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. Hi, I'm Leslie. Nine one one operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, shouldn't you be working? Leslie, I've got to say I'm always happy to have a caller, but. Uh, <laughs> Shouldn't our 911 operator and police dispatcher be minding the phones? What? Oh, Forrest, you have no idea. Listen, I found a body. I need your help. 911 oh. is calling me to Let's report go. a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize your voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not going to be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Uh, you should call the sheriff. Uh, are you serious? Leslie, I'll level with you. I find this hard to believe, but I'll hear you out. What exactly is going on? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. Why would I she know? He well, never mind. By bullet casing. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Are there other officers? Is there anyone else at the station? Uh, are there other officers? I don't, I don't understand. Where are the other officers? Do they know? Have they secured the scene or, or whatever cops are supposed to do? No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. Dang. I called you right after I found her. God. Wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. <laughs> we have three. <laughs> Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Oh. Do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. 
I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself, let them know what's going on, and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's going to man the emergency? <laughs> That's why I called. What? Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. Why? This is a radio show. What am I going to do? Uh, this is the... Uh, why me? I'm a radio talk show host, Leslie. I talk to idiot people about their idiot ideas. I'm not a 911 operator. Why me? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's are there? like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews. They sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are Why did we? Did we like mess up on something? Like talking about ideas. something? Work together. Well, let's have some on the job training right now. Ooh, the little the music room. on the background. I need to get an unconscious deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. Okay. There's gotta be another way in. Uh, try to break down the door. That ain't gonna work. Find another way into the cell. That ain't gonna work. Find another set of keys is more likely. I'm trying to be logical on this. There's gotta be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only nope. one. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Uh, they wouldn't put a set of keys just laying around. They would always have it to an officer. And Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he, you know, when he got ratioed. I glance, but I didn't really look up close. One <sighs> second. Oh my gosh. It's fine. Aren't you an officer? You've dealt with certain situations probably worse. What the heck is serial thriller? Nice. Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do. Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? I'm chilling. I'm a radio host. I can't handle this all night. I think we can handle this. I'm quitting K-Fam if this is a prank. I, I swear to God, Peggy, if this is some sort of joke, I'm leaving this town. Yeah, I'm out of here. I've never heard of anything like, like this happening in broadcast. I've never heard about anything like this either. But we're here now, Forrest, and we've just got to see what happens next. Come on, Martinez. There we go. All right. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. Uh, I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. All right. If the killer came back now. Martinez would be a sitting duck. Uh, out cold like dead? I I don't get that. Also, hi Dustin. <laughs> uh, you're leaving. We're on our own. I mean, there's not much we can do if there's only three officers here. It's the right thing to do. That's a good idea. We don't want to take any risks right now. Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. What? <laughs> my car! My car is on fire! What? what do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? Ooh. No, no way. This can't be. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling. Whistling? It can't be. You know. Oh my God. I can see him. What do you know? She's dead, right? She does not look right? distressed at all. She's just chilling too. How the hell is he? Who, Leslie? 
Leslie? Who? The Whistling Man! The Whistling Man? What? Who's the Whistling Man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. In the More 50s? What year are we in? But he's dead! What year are we in? What the hell? Oh, God. Did you think... 1987. Oh, wow. He attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way! Uh, lock the doors! Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. So like a drum roll. Uh, run for it? No. Hide in a station? No. Take a cruiser? Yes. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any. Why'd they come back? They must have saw her nice come in. Because if they already got the job done, why would they come back to Leslie? How am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. Uh, take Sheriff Matthews' gun. Take Deputy Martinez's gun. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Take his gun. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can he ain't gonna it? be using it. A gun next to him. Let me grab it. Grab it! Oh, it's empty. I forgot. Shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. Uh, is there a weapon lockup? Can you see any other weapons? Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. Yeah, that's best bet. Who, man? All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Which should I take? So, okay, are we time? No, so imagine. I can't imagine, like, holding a body and then just going back. Back, I say. <laughs> I don't know if a, well, I think a taser will work. Depends on the taser. Is it, like, a little, like, thingy or is it a gun? Like, a taser gun. Pepper spray? I just wouldn't say it works because wind, you never know. Oh, I'm driving, the wind didn't get it. I don't know. I would say the taser's the best one. I mean, it's gotta be the taser, right? Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... Wait. Do you hear that? Did you fart? No. I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Uh-oh. Can you still see the whistling man? Maybe the freak left? That's not true. Be careful. Uh, can you still see? She's in the building. You said you could see the whistling man earlier. Can you still see him? Let me take a look. No. I don't see him anywhere. But I can see the car. Squad car three. It's right there. I would say go for it, okay. Chica. Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. That girl is out cold. Yep. There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? <laughs> oh, I so, just landed on the rim. Here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Uh, good. Be positive. Good luck, good Leslie. Time. All right. That's a Music? Brave woman. God, I hope she makes it through this. You know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Uh. 189.16. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we got Leslie back on the line. <laughs> I didn't know what that was. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. <laughs> that, that screen. Oh, hey! <laughs> Sorry! Uh, welcome to the scream! 10-4! 10-4 <laughs> there, good buddy. I, I'm oh, guessing man. you made it to the car then? Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. <laughs> I guess we made it to the car. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat, still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. You should! Maybe Mark he needs a ride! Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! Uh, what's happening? Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! Tase him! Bzz, bzz. Yeah! yeah. Let's go! Let's go, Leslie! Tase! Drive! Leslie, drive! Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. 
Yes. Boy got zapped. Well done. Oh, look at her. Sounds Yay! Like <laughs> Woo, 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 woo. Oh my god, I can't believe we escaped. Yay, well, where's the clapping? You saved a life. Oh, that's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. But let me tell you. Oh, here we go. I prefer doing it from your side of the boat. Leslie, how long do you think it's going to take to get help? Gallows Creek and the Nowhere's Bill, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while. 5.99. Three hours each way? Slightly less if I put my foot down. Put that foot down, girl. You better floor it. You keep that pedal to the floor then. We'll see when you're back. You don't have to tell me twice. Anyway, once I'm in... Oh, I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range. Starting to stir? Radio what? As soon as I can, once I got the cavalry. All right. Uh, see you later, alligator. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. All right. <laughs> so you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. Ball. Can we're I throw get it, back please? To the show, please. Meanwhile, if you have anything on your mind or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. The Scream. <laughs> oh, no! Freak the song! I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? Let's pick another one. Gonna kill half Let's do the five ninety nine one. Let's see what five ninety nine is worth. Helpful? I know, I know. I just what? Oh, <sighs> who is oh. this whistling oh. man oh. character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the fifties. Edward Marshall Looney went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. A dozen? Oh, sorry, my bad. You. Uh, he's coming back tonight, so we're screwed. No, no, no. What happened to him? Okay. What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. The police cornered him, and he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? The story is he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's Jason the story. Voorhees. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So we're screwed. I love how that's two answers in a row. We'll find out. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people. At best. Ho oh, ho! I mean, that's some big numbers! 35 at best? Are you serious? We only have 35 listeners? 35? That's not. How dare you? That's 35 people! Uh, 35 at best? 35 at best? Heck yeah, man! Yeah, it's a school night. It's a school what's night. The population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know. Before my career exploded? Why did it explode? Ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah. Before that. What Around did we do wrong? Shows on the low end? Big gas could pump that up to 10, 15. Easy. 5,000 on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Five million is insane! Yeah, sometimes that doesn't even seem possible. Goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet. I guess. Yeah, I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. All right when I leave my ready. desk. All right, okay, everybody. Bro, shut the music off. Bro, I'm doing my thing. 
All right, everybody, welcome to one eighty nine point sixteen. The scream. Hello, caller. You're live on one eighty nine point sixteen. The scream. Is everything uh, all right? <laughs> Can we get a mic check on that guy? He's breathing into his okay. mic. What's your name and why are you calling in? <laughs> Sounds like my grandmother trying to whistle. You're very professional. You know that? Dude, I almost got scared. Do you accept requests? Do you accept requests? So I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Uh, maybe you <laughs> must make a sacrifice to us. Oh, I didn't realize you were sacrifice God. to us. <laughs> I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzel. Or I'll cut your face Gosh, off. is that like just a bunch of people talking? Is he at a party? Goddamn kids. Uh oh. Cut him off. Cut him off! I want to deal with them. Not yet. I want to deal with them. Uh, <laughs> we also want a mega goal. Yeah, what else? You little dingles. Uh, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, so cheese dusted pretzels and a mega gulp behind the gas station. You got it, whistling man. Uh, a wise choice. <laughs> That was fun. To say, I won't actually be going out to the gas station to buy anything <laughs> for these kids. Frick these kids! You should be going out tonight either. We've got an actual killer out there. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. One eighty nine point sixteen. Introduce the song this time. This is a new song. Listen in to this next track from Late Night Lurkers, if you dare. Peggy, the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our a peaceful man place is just to a rest your bones. Leslie. What a saying. No, that that's really <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. Already? Alright. Let's do this. Alright, 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 alright. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest. Nah. Woo! What? Uh, I dialed 911. I need to Oh, an sure actual call. Here we go. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name? And what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. I'm cop. I'm said cop. The sheriff is dead. Well, that's not going to be motivating. The cops aren't coming. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? Actually happening. Okay. Uh. Bro, these last two are just so stupid. Where are Where you now? now? You <laughs> Those last two are oh, just I so antagonistic. You jazz ran? Oh no. Can you jazz find your keys? Can you go back to find your keys? Sounds like you lost them. I think it'll be fine. Lies. 
Is there anywhere else you can go? Ah, uh, can you? Any, uh, anywhere else you can go? Anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Oh, I'm not going back out there. I. Yeah, she ain't doing it. Oh, oh shoot! Oh, he's back! Oh, he's back! I like that accent. <laughs> Cool. Wait, wait, I don't. Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatband. <laughs> I'll call you back when I find it. I love how she talks. She's got such jazz in her. To 189.16, the scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash, your friendly neighborhood radio host, mechanic, and savior. <laughs> Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. Oh, oh, my bad. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Doesn't the station have a show? Oh, that's not even introducing the song. Oh, whatever. Twins or something. Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. Oh, I'm leaving? I have freedom? Oh my gosh. First thing I'm going to do is actually look around. Close the door. Can we get some silence? Oh, it actually works. Oh my gosh, I love that. Has she tried just asking the car nicely? Can you please turn on? Ew, what the frick? Dude, clean that. All done, all clean. We got anything? I'm gonna investigate so hard. What is this? Siri. I can't say that. Syrian mortar. Siri, not now. Syrian mortar. Dur. Erfrischende. Is that a G? Geschmack. Geschmack. Bon Bluteron Gen. Dude, that's my favorite energy drink. Alright, what else we got? Records. Nothing there. What's all over here? Ooh, hold on. That's got a lot of stuff. What is this? From below it came, behind the scenes, that's not English. On the first night of filming, I screamed so loud that somebody called the local police and gave them an autograph, <laughs> and we continued to shoot. Imagine. <laughs> that's actually really funny, your scream's just that loud. Oh, that face down there is creepy, holy cow. Died alone. <laughs> okay. So this is just all reviews, creepy hour. Suburb, suburban nightmare. Well... It's kind of like this one. How do I... There we go. Ooh. That's a good photo. Alright, sorry I'm on the coffee table. Alright, let's look around. Oh wow, this place is big. <gasps> a toilet! Can I go poop? Is toilet seat up for me. This looks useful. Oh, it is it. I wasn't even expecting that. <laughs> okay. I did it. What is the spilling... Any monster? Why did it get creepy? <laughs> the scream. Why is there a knife there? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. What is this? GC High wins the big game. 28 to 20. Ooh. Oh, what was that? Hold on. This might be useful. Why is the music so creepy in the potty? Someone there? Dude, I'm freaking out. Alright, let's put this here. I'm gonna just keep looking around just a little. Oh, that's Peggy. <laughs> Peggy, you're leaving me out here! Oh, there's a mouse trap. Hold on, that's mean. I'm not getting in there tonight. Well, what's there? Boss room? More potty? Okay. So creepy in here. What the heck is Elvis doing in the girls' bathroom? And why is there no mirror? So many locked doors, so few keys. Okay. And 
Oh. Wow, this place is big. Okay. Oh! Blinding light. No thanks. Dude, it's so creepy. Uh, nothing legible there. Just anything of you. Dude. Oh, here we go. Another one. Oh, maybe this isn't important. Wins the big game. Uh, what is this? Gallows Creek Chili Cook-Off. Hell yeah. Oh, can I pick that up and put that in my office? Oh, here we go. Please enjoy a free sample of garlic bread. We've pinned our latest offers and deals on the outside of the box if you want to read them out here. Uh, grilling sprees, new offer, terrible. We think you should read our advert instead. P.S. A connoisseur like you needs to try our three-hour slow-roasted pizza. Ooh. Hey, I ate the garlic bread. Much like your show, it was mediocre. The deal is worth checking out, though. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, anything here? Preliminary Chalupa Cabra. You can all agree that the flavor profiles of the Chalupa Cabra is best in town. Despite being pricey option, El Diablo Burrito has the best feeling months. Huevos Rancheros are just excellent. For the hundredth time, it's an audio medium. People won't get its egg in excellent. Idiot. Well, that's rude. You should never call someone an idiot. Grilling spree ad. And that's not legible. Ooh, how much? Two forty-five for a cat. Oh, it's a supermarket. I guess. Three ten for chocolate, dude. All right, so let's keep this little thing with us. Nothing there. He's got multiple phones. Nothing there. Do the organization. Can I open these? Oh, those are creepy. <laughs> those are creepy. Uh, this has to be important. Wait, really? Twins, I borrowed your car theft magazine? Those huevos rancheros aren't sitting right. Gonna need something to read. Pray for me. <laughs> uh, okay. So that's what we found in the potty. So we were just one step ahead. Ooh. Roller Ricky's roller rink. Ooh. Okay. Alright. So where's that tape? Let's keep this with us and then we'll also go get the thing. I wonder what happens if we play this, um, on air. Alright. Hey, I'm back! I don't have it yet, so just give me a second. Alright, let's take this one out. I want to play that one too, but when do we get to play these? And where is... Kinda... Is it still in the bathroom? Yes, it is. Alright. Keyless entry techniques. Let's get started. I'm back. Uh oh, ain't that handy? So when when am I ready? Oh. Did you find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about top wine cars. Well, that sounds perfect. So I'm ready. Shut the music off. All right, I will. I will. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. The Scream! How are you Sandra? The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. We're gonna get that hunk of junk. Please, baby. Uh, you need a screwdriver. Unscrew the snow. Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Yeah, that's right. Put the screwdriver Step in the two, ignition. remove the steering column cover. Clockwise. Here goes, baby. I... I... Uh, screwdriver's too fat to fit. What next? Did you do it? Hit the steering wheel with the hammer. Unscrew the steering column. <laughs> Unscrew the steering column. Step check three. Check the serial number and then strip and twist. Just turn. Oh, step three is going to be confusing. If the radio turns on and won't turn off, cut the pink wire. Do not cut the other pink wires. This will trigger the alarm. alarm sound and cut the triple braided green wire. Oh my gosh. Okay, you're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. 
You're doing what I'm saying, and what I'm saying is great. So you're doing great. A red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and a brown wire. Okay, I need... What's the serial number? That's what I need first. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is 576-894-320. Oh, okay, okay, hold on. It's not time, right? If there's a 4 before 3, there is a no 7. No, okay. If there's a 6 anywhere, uh, okay. If there is a 0 at the end, and a 3 doesn't become before 6, uh, cut the red and yellow. Uh, strip and twist red and yellow. and twist together the red and yellow wires. Alright. We take the red and the yellow, and, and we turn. turn. And she just had to jive it though. So see pink and purple wire. What next? Uh, strip the purple wire. Do not touch. This is a live wire. Okay. Uh, strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Oh, brush the purple wire against the twisted wires from separate three. Okay. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Yeah! Let's go! Woo! Fantastic work, baby! Anytime you want to come down to the jazz studio, you get in for free! Woo! Uh, just keep your glad you're safe, but lay off the jazz! We did it! I just can't believe it, but we did it! Nice work, Forrest. I bet oh my gosh, I keep forgetting it's not cheering. Jazz that you answered your call. You bet I am! We did it! Another live saved! Sure did! Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. <laughs> Remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Wow. Take it away, Forrest. 189.16. gonna love this next track. I still can't believe this is happening. <laughs> you love how I could just do that. Like Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about. What do you mean? No, I Gallows just did that Creek one. Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Hey, that's really? not nice. Miserable? Oh, see, uh, nothing personal. It's a sad place on earth. That's so mean. It's nothing personal, Peggy. But it's not Can I though. choose like a nicer option and be no, supportive? It's not really anywhere. Well, I like it here. People are polite and uh Ooh, it's jazzy. Ask backwards. Don't be awful for us. Yeah, don't be a dick. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. Uh some folks have been okay. You don't notice this Yeah <laughs> my gosh. I guess some folks have been okay. You're not terrible. After a while. Not terrible after a while? My brain's coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for... I think you're swell. <laughs> anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night. And that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. I think we still got more time. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. Ben... Ooh, the time went by. Caller on line one. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh. All right, I'm back. Okay. Oh, so, okay, I get it. Okay, I. Gosh, man. Oh, 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 oh. Evening caller. Good timing. <laughs> Host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Boris. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, He's a memorable one. I want to be the meanest I can to this dude. Hello, Brian. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. What have you got to say about what's happening? I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Haunty's Pizza. Oh, oh you did a really great 
Hold on, I don't Wow! That's really good of you. You really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running great deals that'll have you eating for pennies. Can we stop talking to this guy? great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Okay, oh. buddy. <laughs> yeah, that didn't come out great. That was pretty tasteless, I have that to say. Was pretty tasteless, I have to say. I'm sorry, Forrest. Yeah, can you like I leave? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait a minute. Come on down to Pony's Pizza this weekend! Yeah, I'm with you, Penny. End it! <laughs> You're just calling in to advertise your shop. Well, <laughs> Peggy, hang up on him. Already, come on. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? Yeah. <laughs> Great party, man. Thanks. Can I grab another beer? Sure. Done. You want out of the fridge? Oh no. We're out of beer. What am I gonna do? Oh no! It's going to be over! <laughs> <laughs> Fear not! A grilling spray will give you a free six pack of beer if Dallas High wins this Tuesday. Say mm. what? That's right. Order a meal bill from us and you'll get a free six pack of beer if Dallas High wins. A free six pack? Righteous! You heard me. Six beers if Dallas High wins. Mm. Sounds like you've already had enough beers. <laughs> I hope we murder them. <laughs> Me too, Billy. Me too. Come on down to Grilling Spray. I'll call off 555 749 8335. We've got barbecue you'll die for. What if it happens if you actually yeah. do call that? Hey, Forrest. That was great. Do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Uh, I have a feeling you're going to tell me. Spare ribs. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! That was great. Where is it? Good one, Penny. We're back. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hey. Welcome to the scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs. And... Wait. This guy talks Forrest like he's out of Nash. breath. I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Mm, I am 911. I am 911. At least for tonight, anyway. Damn it, son. I don't care who you are. Hey, don't call me son. Me on with Sheriff I'm a bitter old Sheriff man. Is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Yes. Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? No. I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. No. <laughs> We're live on air. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get worse every year. And this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye <laughs> when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. Did you now? I don't think it's a teen. Uh, and now he's back. Maurice, I don't know what's going on, but he's back. The whistling man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. <laughs> every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he 
killed Sheriff Matthews. Yeah, we're not lying about that. I'm in the boardroom upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. Here we go. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Okay, can you get out of here? You think you could take on the who <laughs> why would you even suggest that? Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Uh, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinet. Nice. Blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out. That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Um... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with mm. different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. Hmm. <laughs> and get an exclusive interview with the killer. <laughs> yeah. And get an exclusive interview with the killer. That could be interesting. No, I mean we just make a distraction. Oh, that's it's not fun. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. <laughs> Sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out. You realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? What do you want to do? For that to be successful, you're going to need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. All right. 189.60 You You don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Yes. Russell. I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second too. What's going I'll on there? Your fax machine. <gasps> don't let me down. I'm so gonna have you murder No, we got this. Where's my fax machine? Oh, that was fast. How do you know our fax machine number? KFAM and the Gallows Reporter have a pretty long history. Well, that's good. Uh. I'll go pick up that map then. Yeah, I know where the fax oh, machine is. The fax machine's in the office on the other I'm side. I'm going. Of Thanks, Peggy. Be I'm right going. Back. Oh, I'm free. Okay. Okay. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Hmm. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. I wonder if anything changes. Each time we go through these areas, like someone's watching us, or maybe, you know. Oh gosh. This must be it. Can I put it? Make a copy of it. <laughs> okay. Apparently not. Like, is there anything? Need a key to get in there. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, is it still scary? Yes. Mmm. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like like I wonder if like we can ever see through these windows. I wonder why the windows are so cloudy. I'm back. I'm back in action like a fraction penny. How are you? Let me put my did you see the the we won? GC high? Here, I'll put it there for you to look at. Alright, let's there we go. Hey, did you get the fax? Yes, I did. Do you not see it? Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, hmm. we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation. Whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. His plan he okay, so he's in work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Mm -hmm. The kitchen? Maybe? 
Call the catch in the extension is zero two. Oh, is he? Did he just say he's in the boardroom? Oh, I heard. Where do I need to go? Editor's room. Wait. Oh shoot. On second thought, let's dial another room. Let's dial another. Boy. I'm gonna what kill him. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. I can get another number ready. But we probably won't get to change our minds again. Where do you want me to call? Okay. Um. Call the editor's office. The extension is zero three. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Shoot. Ah, uh, you need to go into the archives. Oh my gosh! Did I get him dead? I just didn't hear where Russell was. To the archives. Yeah. That makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. I forgot where he said he was. I can't believe it. Okay. Actually heading to my office. That's good, right? It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Yeah, sure, uh, Peggy, don't whatever. Mention it. <laughs> don't, don't mention it. So humble. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, if you. <gasps> oh, what? What paused? I move. I'll call when I get there. All right. Do you think he'll make it okay? No. I'm sure he'll be fine. He'll die. But now, what do we do? Now we play music. We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Uh, yep. Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? Hey, Russell. I am. I don't think he saw me. I gotta give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Right. Exactly. Uh, I can move the furniture out of the way. Not quickly or quietly. Uh, can you fight him? No. Maybe play dead? No. Uh, can you lock him in a room? Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. The damn fire rig has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait. No. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Escándalo! that? What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? <laughs> okay. Now's not the time. You a conspiracy fan, Peggy? Yeah. I didn't know you were into conspiracies, Peggy. I may have borrowed a few tapes from our manager's office. He has quite the collection. Ooh. Will you two chatterboxes pipe down? I've got it all figured out. Sorry, sorry. Archive. Yes. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. Okay. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in. We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god. Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. <laughs> so we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Uh, any ideas to get some noise in there? Is there a TV in there? In an archive? Use yourself as bait. Is there a TV in there? Is there a TV in that room? Maybe that could draw him in. Ah, of course. I turn it up, he comes in. And I get my head chopped off. Win-win. Think of something else. Uh, use a radio? Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. Hopkins! He has a little portable radio he never turns off. Uh, okay, then that should be easy enough. 
Hey, Jeremy, how's it going? Uh, is it still in the office? I hope he's a 189 point. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Radio fan there. Does he listen to 189.16? The scream. Gallows Creek's best and only late Colin show. It's so funny. Sorry. I'd expect that level of self advertisement from Brian Ponty. <laughs> Don't be a Ponty for us. Yeah. Also, Sorry, my bad. You idiots, focus now. It's portable radio should still be here. What is it, in the cubicles? Here in the archives. Oh, okay, in the archives. Let me just take a peek around. All right. Great job, Forrest. Easy enough. Like you picked the perfect place. Heck yeah, I did. Exactly as planned. Yep. That was a hundred percent just me thinking ahead. Yep. Exactly as planned. Exactly how it should be. It's all coming together. I'm just gonna turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Uh, turn the volume down. Please turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Ash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. Of course you knew, Maurice. You're so smart, Maurice. The radio works. If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off. <laughs> Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Heck yeah, for Hopkins. All right, Hopkins. Oh, yeah. Oh, I keep I forgetting that's a freaking. So <laughs> I keep thinking that's a cheer. Up. How am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be on the room when it's on, or I'm dead. You okay. just once again, win-win. Oh, that's a good point. Uh. But wait, we're the radio. Yeah. We can just be quiet until you're ready. <laughs> if you can do that. Yeah, sure. 189.16. Now, even when I know something for a fact, I like to double check. But after your earlier self <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, okay. I just need so we need to make call. another call. Sounds like we need to make another call for us. Yepers, Where okay. Where we send the killer? To the boardroom, or the kitchen, or the office space. Boardroom. Boardroom's easier for him to go. Shroopy. Wait, maybe the kitchen's easier, because then he'll be there. Cause, yeah, I think the kitchen. Call the kitchen. The extension is zero, Ooh, two. I hope that's, that's the right work. decision. The kitchen is far away from the editor's office, but the killer searched it before. Are you sure? Okay, then the boardroom. You're making me doubt myself. Let me have a think again. Okay, the boardroom then. Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? <sighs> yeah, sure. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay. Make the call, call the Peggy. Who goes around just whistling? <laughs> just woo. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Okay. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. I think we could do Any it. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? Your mom's a hoe. Uh, I'll impersonate Mr. Russell. I'll give fake advice. I'll call the killer, Jackass. I'll impersonate Mr. I'm Russell. Do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. I'll What's draw anyone in. Impression? I think I gave that <laughs> What a great plan this is, Pearl. Uh, Pearl. I'll give you an A for effort. That was so Ooh, good. You're just jealous. Here we go. What do I do with this light? This light seems. Radio set up in the secret archive. Signal. I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I. Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself. But that's where the killer's going. Cubicles. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. They are. Your judgment has kept me alive so far now. Ooh. What do you reckon? He's in the boardroom, so he's fairly close. So I think the cabinet's out 
Hide in the secret car fire heart. Oh. No, let's do cabinet, actually. I think cabinet's the best bet. Hide in your cabinet. Alright. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? Got it! We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Uh, quick, Mr. Russell, hide in the back room in your office. Forrest, I don't think that was enough time for him to hide. Wait, really? Oh, shit. <laughs> no, I messed up! Wait, 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 I messed up. I told you to... Oh, 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 oh. I'm an idiot. I should just shut oh, up. He's, he's... I'm such a moron. Out of print. <laughs> uh, let's put on a song. Give us some time to recover. Oops. I think that would be for the best, Peggy. <sighs> Folks, we'll be back soon. If you have any stories about Maurice that you'd like to share, give us a call after this next track. I should have just shut up. I, w I thought it was since it was a quick thing, but you know, it's like, you know, oh man. Well, this is going to be a long. Whoops. Night. Oh, really? Feel like it's going pretty quickly to me. I could ask you some questions to speed things along. Man, you really recovered from that death, you know? Sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together hey. like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. Uh, what do you want to know? I'll grab this, but okay. Maybe I like being a mystery. Oh, I'll tip of the fedora. Maybe I like being a mystery. Too bad. Question one. Tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy, that, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? I'm a lone wolf. No, that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, Rip a Rooney, bro. Uh, uh, it's okay, Peggy, that's how it goes. You're sorry? Why? Did you do it? You're sorry, why? Did you do it? Of course not. I only Did you kill my mommy and poppy? Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. But what happened there? <laughs> what a coincidence, dude. You can be such a douche, and I'm all for it. Huh. What a coincidence. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck. And, well, that was dad. Man. My mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad. She even made me take my stepdad's last name. Ew. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway. I don't like that. Mr. That's Weaver weird. got sick one day and... My mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, yeah that's weird. Sorry. That's sexual. Trying to be. It's okay. I know. I'm sorry. Dude, I'm I am defensive about that name. Nail it. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Dang. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Really? Think someone needs our help? What? Maybe. You want to go check it out? Not really. You, you sure you don't want to go? Yeah, I want to. No way. I'm locked up tight in here. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Bro. <laughs> Why am I? Why do I not deserve at least a little open door treatment? Okay. See you face to face. The first floor, then check the door. <sighs> Thanks, Pegster. Dude, I can't believe I killed someone. I totally did not mean to. I should have just stayed quiet. Ah, oh, man. Nope, that's not it. This is it. Okay, let's take a look real quick. You know, new area. We unlock something. This is Loctite. Well, that's good to know. Mm, 
Let's see. Ooh, cheese. Whoa, that's a cool desk. I like that. That's cool. A tape. Who's out there, huh? Huh? Who's out there? Huh? Who being weird? Who's dropping off tapes? Who's doing the Peggy move and dropping off tapes? What do we got going on here? All right, we've seen that. We've seen that. Um, <laughs> that's cute. No flies down here. Wow. Ooh. Anything back there? Oh, another exit. Um, what's this? Maze maze. Oh, look at the cat photos. Oh, those are cute. Well, the second one's creepy, but they're cute. Okay. Barb, I don't know how to say this, but I think we should see other people. I hope we can still be friends, though. Brad, P.S. You owe me five bucks for the festival tickets. <gasps> Brad, you suck. You're... <laughs> what kind of breakup is that, Brad? Wow. Um. Okay, so let's just grab this uh, little tapey too. Wait, there's more? Who's in this little corner? Good job on the new job. Jeannie, good luck. I'm so proud of you. Make lots of friends. We're Tars. Oh, oh, mom. What a supportive mommy. Here you go. Uh, Jeannie carries in friendship. That's cool. These are some sick drawings, too. Jimmy and Jeannie. Awesome tattoo idea. That's cool. Alright, nothing else here. And attention staff, please stop putting stickers on office furniture, you're lowering the resale value of everything. Dang, Reggie. Reggie, you're boring. All right. Thank you. Play on air. What if I don't? I could just not listen to you. You know. I'm not gonna... Oh, uh, where am I going? I'm not gonna... Why would I abide by whoever this is? It could be straight up corn noises. You know what I mean? I'm back. I'm back. I'm back, Peggy. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. no. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says... Yeah, they did the Peggy play move. Play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. What? You don't even know what it is. Ha! Peggy's just out here just, just ready to freaking cause so many controversies. Uh, here you go. Yeah, this is great. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. Was that worth it, Peggy? Peggy, I did Penny? Not enjoy that. What the hell was that? Your consequences. I. Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. <laughs> uh, be careful. Sorry about that, Ed. That, uh, <clears throat> wasn't the ad tape we meant to play. Sorry, folks. It won't happen again. Yeah. There's no way the killer got Garbage. the newspaper to hear so quick. I know. Oh, it's 104. So all that happened in like a 15 minute span. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. <laughs> Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. 189.16. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. Another one? What's with all these cassettes? I, I'm going... Wait, she said... What? She said go on... It's under her door. Yeah, give me the freedom. What is this? Play me ASAP off air. Well... Is this off air, Peggy? How do I... Ooh. Ooh, my bad. Ooh. No one heard that. Stop. Uh, boink. And... Or try your call again. Ugh. Straight to voicemail? My god. Are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We 
we gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. I'll be frank, I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Prior and current friendship, Gina. Forrest Nate, you all right? Don't worry about Gina, you know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest. Dang. You know, Roddy Snatcher? Yeah, you kind of just like, big Roddy fan. We're old friends. I used to be a big deal. We're old friends. Yeah, Roddy and I are old friends. Oh, hmm. I love Roddy. I will always find you with my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god. I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. Yeah, I'm just I a little cool. I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K-Fan, not to me. Then it's gotta be downstairs at reception. Oh! Okay. I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at K-Fan aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. Okay, well, I didn't see it down there. Now I have to go down there again? Jeez. Um. Okay. Hello. Any new changes down here? No, I thought that was it. Where is it then? Down here by reception. Whoa. What's this? New state of the art. Okay. Apartments. Starting at a low price of three hundred dollars p.m. Comes with a bathroom, modern open kitchen plan, a garden, and a pool. Pretty sweet. Let it clip through that. All right, and football game. Where? Where would it be? Is this it? This must be it. Final breath. Oh. My tiny selection grows. Oh. I don't know what this is. Okay. Gosh, I wish I could run. No one's watching me, is there? I'm watching you. I'm watching me, watching you, watching me. Oh, excuse me. Door. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> Why did the door do that? I'm back, Peggy. Is it in here now? Is it? Oh, yes, it is. Here we go. Did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! <laughs> Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear. Jeez, anywhere. my mouse like flies. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Let's go! It's a very like new age type song. Wow. God. <laughs> Yay, new song! He is. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. That's it? Dang, it's been peaceful after that one guy died. I wonder why. And I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. Oh, uh, <laughs> whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. Oh, good job, Peggy. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream, and tonight's 911 standard. This is Murphy! <laughs> Murphy! Murphy, uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. <laughs> Fernando. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. Aww. I've learned how to live. How to laugh. Most importantly, how to love. How to love. 
<laughs> uh, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Weird night to celebrate. Wow, that's mean. Okay. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. Killer? You think you're tough, huh? Big man with a big knife, huh? Prove it. Come face me, a true warrior at the gallows waste disposal plant. Oh. Guess what? Oh, this is a bad idea. Oh, boy, here we go. You get a kick are you gonna kick his ass, Murphy? God damn right. <laughs> kick, his ass. kick his butt! I got all the tapes and Master Robin's old joke. Oh, kid. don't mess with him. So get ready. Whistle it, man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yes! Let's go! There he goes. Ladies and We're gentlemen, saved! Keep your fingers crossed for Murphy. As he tries to become our hometown hero. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! Yeah! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, <gasps> Roller Disco, Roller lessons, Ricky. Train. <laughs> we got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, sink donkeys and ponies, apple bobbing, firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, seats, bitten, sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. And fake tattoo, <laughs> face painting, puppets, petting zoo, amazing zoo. Maze, maze, square dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilton bee, and sewing circle, Quilt and pie bee. eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, Aww. and of course our famous gourd measure off. Ooh. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory, and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, Aww. tragically taken from us last festival. Oh. I wonder if it was from the fried dough. I can see why it's world famous. <laughs> it's a highlight around here for us. Oh, I am that sorry was good. to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome Let's back to the Let's do Master Robbie next. I have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Sticker Let's set? Let's see what our next caller would choose. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hello. Hello? Who is this? Well, at least we know you're not choking. Hello. Are, are you still with us? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me. Who would do? Jesus. Why would the killer do a phone call? Listen, Carla, don't panic. Huh. We've done this a few times now. Let's go. We can help you. A few times already. Let's go. So, you saved them, or? Yeah, sure. Sure. You saved two of them. Okay. We're on a positive. Okay. We're on a positive side of it, at I'm least. Help you. Can you tell me your name, Carla? I'm Doctor Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Hi, Virginia. For us, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Please don't let me die. Will do. Uh, just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm. I'm oh God. You're taking forever. Oh, <laughs> I'm taking forever. Uh, call a neighbor. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house. That's yes. good. Oh, even better! Man, okay, no need to like go all eight H O A on them. Oh God! Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's oh God! I can't think. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Breathe. Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know. But hmm. Please, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat. We can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. 
Uh, don't worry. Try to remember. Don't be a child. That's not gonna worry. Or right, that's not gonna work. Here, yeah. Try to remember. I can't do this. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. One eighty nine point sixteen. It's David Scopo with Moonlight. Mm. Peggy, what places do take out in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head, uh, well... Grilling Spree? Oh, that's, that's where that is. Place, grilling Spree, and you can order from Chalupa <gasps> Roller Rickies! Oh, and of course we have Auntie's Pizza. Is that on here? Chulapacabras are here. <gasps> There's Ponty's Pizza! <laughs> there it is. Gallows and Sons. So what is this stuff? What are these for? Huh. Okay. Let's get calling. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But well, what we can do is this. We gotta wait for the office to get here. Frat boys ordered from. Call the takeout, pretending to be from the frat. Place an order and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. All right. Uh, well, better get to. I hate this town, <laughs> dude. You can make him go on such like a little villain arc. Got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. There's a kitchen downstairs? I'll just slide it under my door. Oh, another sliding. Thanks, Pegs. You could get out of that room, you know. Start. Just like Carl. Me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy. We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... Thanks. I just have to look around. Um, wasn't there a thing about the Chulapa Cabras? Uh, this thing. A promotion, huh? Maybe if I find the pizza box. Okay, so let's keep that. But yeah, Peggy is reminding me of freaking Carl from that one <laughs> Jimmy Neutron episode where he was just like in a bubble. Because <laughs> he didn't, uh, he was like, was he sick or was he trying not to have germs? It's like one or the other. Also, why is this door creaked open? Oh, because I just went in here. So, nothing else should be in there. What's up with the tiles? The tiles are also, some of them are like, off. Like, look at that. Someone could be peeking in. That's not opening. Okay. How do I get downstairs again? I already forgot. Is it, it's this door in the third one. Okay. So, kitchen downstairs oh back here no one's out there right here we oh Ooh, it's creepy lock it lock it lock for now what do you mean it's not locked up visibly looking at the lock okay you're lying to me oh so many locked doors so few keys do not disturb bim bam my favorite cleaning supply. Oh, I don't like how eerie it is down here. Ooh, hoo. No, no, no. Oh, I thought that, like, moved. Okay. Uh, nothing. Just a bunch of bim-bams and whim-whams. All right. Here we go. Ooh, okay. Oh, here's the pizza box. Putting through trash. This is a new low. Ooh. Interesting offer. Oh. I wonder how well Gallon's High performed. Uh, nothing. I gotta take a look, see, will I have the chance? Could be my last moments here. Seven days? Oh, is that like the ring reference? Out of order! Oh, that looks like the paper from, um, Wreck-It Ralph! Oh, that's cool! Looks really close to it, if not, uh, exactly it. High-grade video cassette. <laughs> oh, it's broken too. Dude, so many things are broken down here. Whoa. Did we look at that? Yeah, we did. It just looks really creepy. Nice. New music to play. Oh, heck yeah, new music. 
That was like the last thing I was expecting. Sweet! So let's bring this piece of junk with us. Actually, is there anything in the fridge? Wow. We are stocked up down here. At least that coffee machine's working. Okay. Let's head back up. No one's here, right? Man, that's a dirty freaking futon. Holy cow. So what is this? It's one free beer for every point that Gal's High wins. Oh yeah, go team. Best pizza in town. $8.99 for some pizza? That ain't bad. I'm back with pizza. Hey, find anything useful? Oh heck yeah, I did. I'll wing it. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Uh, yeah. Let's make the call. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Uh, we're gonna be calling Ponty's Pizza. Call Ponty's Pizza. You got it. I mean, they got a great deal on it. The game won. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take your order? Uh, frat man calling. No, hey, dude. Hey, dude. What's going on? Uh, may I take your order? <laughs> garlic bread? No, not slow roast. Slow roast takes three hours. I need some garlic bread. Oh, I need the bread. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. <laughs> the folks at KFAM are huge. Oh, I'm sure the they are. Oh, I should really call them and let them know. <laughs> yeah. And now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got a new song, right? Oh, there it is. Oh. Well, never mind. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No. Wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. Are they? Oh, uh, equally awful, equally good. If you had to pick, uh, equally awful? You mean equally awful. No, equally good. Oh. But if I had to order, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. <laughs> right. So, between grilling spree and chalupa coffee. That's all you guys have? Mm, it depends. Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? It can Ooh. change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, maybe I... Hold that thought for us. We've got a call coming in. Can't even say my opinion. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! <laughs> hey, what's up, Lunker? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? No, <laughs> I'm not a goose. Uh, it's Forrest, an emergency. Sure, no. This is an emergency. Bunker, this is an emergency. I. Nice try, Goose. I may be drunk, but I'm no goose. This ain't no goose. Uh, listen, I need you to... Goose, come get oh me. Oh my gosh. The brothers are waiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. How can I prove this to you? Oh, let me get a second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian. The Barbarian. Look, see, can you hear that?
The flow. Wait, really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian! I got it! Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. There! I played it! It's five ninety nine. Thank God. Listen, you got to get over to your neighbor's house, all of you. Just say no more. Bunkers moving the house. <laughs> Dude, I can't imagine how hectic a frat party is. Line two. Hello, you're live on one eighty nine point sixteen, the stream. Forrest, it's the killer. He's at the door. Please. Oh my God. Kalai. And his fraternity Woo! <laughs> Some heroes wear capes. Some wear sheets as togas. Hey, Forrest. Did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't Ooh. Do you know what she Ooh, means? that got me nervous. A janitor here at the station named Clive. But your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a leak. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Already? Holy cow. Time to turn the music off. No. Okay. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. <laughs> Forrest. Small business owner. I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Terrible. Ooh. <laughs> it's a scary I love this dude's everybody. accent. Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, <laughs> I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. Uh huh. Good for you, friend. Good for you, friend. I'm glad you're keeping safe and busy. Thank you. Oh, I'm really living the American dream. <laughs> he sounds drunk. My business. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You slipped up. You must really love your work. You must really, really love your work. Oh, I do. My small business really is my home. What's your small business? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, <laughs> it's Ponty's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! She's just like, what? Again? Ponty, no. No free ads. <laughs> no free ads. I guess we can't be that mad at him. No. Calling Ponty's did save Virginia. True. I mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just... Uh, I can be mad. Look, he's I'm allowed to now. be angry. We already have somebody else on the line. I'm so Just mad. Take a deep breath and let's keep going. Who? <gasps> okay, Forrest, shut the music so, off. I'm just gonna hit play again. I like the background music. You can't have me in silence. Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream, and tonight's 911 standard. Hi. Hello. Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And Eugene Stein. I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. Aww. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show. Looking up at the stars and waiting for her. Ooh. You have a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. Molly. I feel bad for mimicking everyone here. <laughs> It's just they say it's so weird. Molly. Into the love labyrinth. Ooh. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect. 
stupid guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming or wait and see? For real, kid? Um. You've been listening all night. Do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. <laughs> I think you need to go home, bro. I wish I had a love lab. <laughs> you do wanna trust me. Go home. Eugene? You really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. But, uh, wow, three oh, people geez. here in the game with yeah, all dead parents. I guess it's not the night. Poggers. What a coincidinkle. Here's some wrestling. Yes, you mean that for all. Molly! I'm in the middle! Molly! It'll take a little while to get here, but uh, thanks again, Forrest. Of course. Good talk. <laughs> Molly can't whistle. How do you know if Molly can't whistle? Oh, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life. Not the worst. You're dead. Well, that was nice knowing you. Well, I'll get you out of this. Do you know the way out? Just run through the walls. Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way, Forrest. She's right. I... Listen, Eugene. Breathe. E. Hide. And call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry. Do it for Molly. All right. Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You Where know, is Barbara, that? Is that it? Is this it? She's a maze maze fanatic. Barbara? Here. Ravine. Oh, there's a traffic notice. Wait, I want to keep this track. Whistling point. Uh, sorry. Am I bothering you? Uh, why should change your mind? Is it Maze Maze for kids? Maybe we should call Barbara. Maybe we should call Barbara then. If she's so big on the Maze Maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. Wow. But she probably has Maze Maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Yes, uh, ma'am. Uh, which Ooh. one is Barbara? She again? just said the receptionist. Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh, yeah, Barbara. I've seen you speak to her. Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Yeah, she already said that. Sits at reception. That's what receptionists do. Never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Frick Brad. Right, yeah. Sorry, I guess it's just the stress. Yeah, of bye. No excuses. Bye. Just go right, close the door on me. It's okay. All right, thank you. All right. <laughs> She's like, all right, I'll go. Just shut up. I'll do it. He's about to see his parents real soon. Anna, come on. I can save him. I can save him. Just let me have my coffee. Huh. Dang it, I want it to break. All right, is this what this is? Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. Bingo, bango, boomo. And this is where Brad broke up with her. Shame. She seems like a nice girl who apparently does no work. Well, she's not nice anymore because she left her highlighter out with no cap. Who does that? Drying out your highlighter. Okay, what a waste of a product. Alright, let's take a look at this. Ooh. Oh, those are numbers. Okay. Hopefully it's not that difficult. Also, why are we seeing red outside? He just want to hug his mama. <laughs> mama. That's what is that's what Molly's name actually is. It's just mommy. Molly. Here you go. All right, I'm ready. Any luck? Yeah. I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Yep. Why is it in the trash? But never mind. It doesn't matter right now. Yeah, no need to get into some that's gossip. The Barbara later. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line 1. Uh, I was gone for 2 seconds. When you're ready, shut the music off. No. I refuse. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our So the center, I'm assuming, is this? Eugene, you're back on air. <sighs> I'm lost, Forrest. Oh. I just ran, and I, I don't know where I am. Why would he go after Eugene? Or, like, just in this maze in general? What was the killer doing? Just trying to cure some boredom? Oh, hay bales to your right. So... Wait, what? 
if there's hay bales to your right. I'm confused already. How can hay bales be to your right if it's at an intersection? Right? Am I crazy? Hay's at the crossroad. Oh, facing the tractor statue. And there's hay bales to your... Okay, alright, thank you. I am trying my best to keep this child alive. So he's... Okay, I see where he is now. He needs to go... Uh... He needs to go left. Oh, my bad. Left. Go left. Okay. Okay. And a creepy rocking horse on my left. A creepy rocking horse? What? He has a pig. He has a pig in front of him. Pig is three. And then he has. Okay, so now he needs to go. Uh. Oh, did I mess up this kid? No, I shouldn't have. We should be good still. So we just need to get him. On that line and hit him to nine and then nine and ten. So he needs to go backwards. Yeah, I think he needs to go backwards. My goodness, I keep doing that. Go backwards. <laughs> Why didn't I just invite her over? <laughs> I'm at a crossroads. Oh gosh. There's a big horse statue up ahead. Which way? No, you want to go left. Still. Go left. Go left. That's not whistling. <laughs> That's not whistling. <laughs> oh, this poor kid. Is he in like a foster home or something? Or maybe he's not even a kid. Tiny barn. Okay, so... He needs to go right. Go right. Go right. Man, you're running. You keep running, kid. I can't run. Much more. You're almost there. You got this. I just passed a cordon silo. Okay. Didn't see anything else. Uh. Oh my gosh. Where do I go? He just passed the corn silo. So keep going forward? Go forward. Okay. Here I go. This uh right. No, no, I I'm going back to where I was. Jesus! Okay, he just passed the corn silo and didn't see anything else on the way. The corn silo is number nine! Oh, maybe I just need to keep telling him to go left. Go left then, right? Go left. Go left. Okay! I'm going! Run, Eugene! Please! No! You don't have to do this! Ah! No way! I messed that up! I didn't real. He just- Oh no! Stupid kid? It's his fault? I guess that's what love does? <laughs> I guess that's what love does. It makes us fall to pieces. I just- Forest? Okay, don't. By the way, why do you think Molly what? missed her it was date? Le it was okay? right? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. Say hello to Mama, Eugene. No, I messed up. I didn't get it, I guess. I'm so stupid. We'll make oh. sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious I killed two people tonight. Let's go. Report a Clive to stay alive. Report a Clive to stay alive. Take it away. Uh, oh, you're gonna make me shut off my music, huh? 189 points. Tyler, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16. The scream. Hey, 
wonderful show tonight for us. Hey. <gasps> Thank you. Well, that's kind of you to say. Thank you. What's your name, caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune for us? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Uh, Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're going to find that song. What do you mean? I played what? it a few nights ago. I know, but uh, we don't have it anymore. What? What are you talking about? I threw it away. What? You threw it in the Wasteful. Car. No, I... Litter. I threw it out the window earlier today. Bro, what? Why would you throw it out the window? That's mature. Peggy. <laughs> Peggy. That's a bit extreme, isn't it? Right? Dad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. Well, Brad's a bully. We seen what he did. He broke up so the receptionist. I it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. Mm, what do we do then? Sorry about Brad. Sorry about Brad. Let's say sorry. For shame, Peggy. I'm sorry, Brad, for being a dick. Yeah. I... Thanks, Forrest. You're welcome. Let's just play a different song. No. We've got more important things to think about anyway. No, I'm gonna gotcha. do... Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Yeah, frick you, Don. Sorry. Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song, 1980X. 1980X. All right. Peggy, what did we learn? Don't throw music out the window. Of all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? <laughs> you wrote that song for one. Oh, come on. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. But why would you listen to it on repeat for years? That's what I'm confused about. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. You're such... Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. The this Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest? Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. Mr. Dojo! What's wrong? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. Uh-oh. Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? <laughs> uh, that's not important right now. Just tell me what happened. Goddamn police. He came to the gallows place and smoked his plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside of Dang, he showed you what's up. Oh, oh god damn. I smell smoke. Uh oh. I think he started a fire. Uh oh. He will call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now or I'm gonna die. Uh oh. Peggy, <laughs> get the fire department on the way. Another one's on the way. Another one's on the way to heaven right now. Now just come on, Cap. Where is he? Waste disposal. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report Ooh. a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. What do these lines mean? The teal is obviously roads, but what is the yellow? What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? This town sucks. Oh, God damn it. This town has Boy, no... evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. As you do. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Do you have... Wait. Oh, wait, here we go. Alex lives on the corner of... Oh gosh, this is what this is for. Hold on, all right. We're gonna put this right there. We're gonna put this one right here. We're gonna put this one right here. 
We're going to plan this out because we want him to live. All right. So first one. Lives on the corner of Haddonfield Road right next to Romeo Street. Corner of Haddon right next to Romeo Street. So right here, I'm assuming. Maybe. And then Catherine lives at the west end of Myers Lane. Gosh, I'm going to accidentally kill him. Uh, Myers Lane, West End. Uh, check my DMs. Why do I need to check my DMs? What did you... What? <laughs> did you actually finally see that I, I was watching your Tetris? Uh, yeah, I was watching your Tetris, Tyler, I'm sorry. <laughs> you reacted. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was doing that at the beginning, waiting for Anna. Uh, lives at the west end of Myers Lane. Uh, so she lives here, or just around here. There we go. Um, and then old man Jer- <laughs> old man Jericho. Lives at the east end of Myers Lane. Well, we're not going to do him. But he lives on this end. And then... Fire department. Get more fire engines. <laughs> Where's the fire department? Anyways. <gasps> That's where we are! We're at KFAM Radio! Man, we're in, like, the dead center. Um, I don't see... I see Ricky Roller. I see Giblet Field. I don't think it's necessary that we know where it is. That's fine. All right. So he's there. So I think the purple Alex, I think Alex Haddonfield Road right next to Romeo Street, right? That's just straight on. I think we're going to do Alex. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Alex. Call Alex. All right. I think that's close to the waste disposal. That's where he's at, right? Alex? Is he not answering? They're on the way. Okay. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Oh, man. I hope I didn't mess it up. Wait. Wasn't there closed roads? Oh, no. Wasn't there closed roads? First, I'm getting a call. Wait, there was a paper about closed roads, and I totally forgot. Are you sure you can't? What's happening, Peggy? Haddonfield's closed. Alex was too far away, too slow. The plant burned down. It collapsed. Oh my gosh! Is... Poor Fernando is gonna be crushed. It was Fernando's birthday! Dude. I'm telling you, at the beginning of this, I said that I watched the gameplay and I just wanted to get 100%. I just wanted to get 100%. I'm over here killing everyone. I think we saved like three people and that's it. I totally forgot about the traffic notice and it was right in my freaking face. Oh my gosh, I'm garbage at this freaking game. I suck. <laughs> okay. At least I got 73 paper ball baskets. <laughs> Haddonfield was closed. It was closed. Haddonfield was closed because he had to go all the way around and I could have just called her, maybe. What? What? Residents will be unable to access the connecting roads between Haddonfield Avenue and Rogers Avenue? Where the frick is Rogers? Here? Wait. Oh! <coughs> wait, no, I'm confused. So, I don't get... Couldn't he just gone up in that? It still makes no sense to me. The connecting roads between... So, that to that. No, I don't get it. Dang! I, I can't. Alright. His father died a hero! Just like his dad! His father died a hero. He was just trying to protect the town. That's actually pretty nice. Bro. I know! I'm so nice. I'm so nice. I'm not but smart, but I'm nice. I promise we will stop this. For you 
M for Fernando. Rip Fernando. Oh. Fernando. It's going to be our... Forrest, we have another caller. Let's not waste time. <sighs> Fernando for his birthday is getting a dead dad. All right, let's go. Our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Oh. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. Bro. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with Rogers Ron Avenue, the connecting this road to what time. this oh, road? Oh, it's mayoral candidate and it. scion of the town founder, Mr. Gallows. Are you oh, and McCready Street's fully closed. So this street's closed. So yeah, he would have to go like... All and the way. They need to keep us he would have to figure safe. out how to get. Yeah. Okay, Teddy. We. And here he could have just went. Yeah. To our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up the bat for us all tonight. Teddy, who are you? I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Thank you. Jackass. Yeah, honestly. You're a prick. You know what? I'm angry. I killed three people today. You are a prick, Teddy. I want to make sure I get this out on air to all of Gallows Creek. You're a real prick, Teddy. I just want to make sure our town is safe and proper. I'm sure. That's why the Gallows Shut him up. Family Factory, founded by my father, my father, employs over 200 Teddy unless you've got an emergency I'm cutting you off you know what I do oh my gosh a problem that's ruining our town you know what it is uh the whistling man your family's waste plant burned your family waste plant just burned down so now we have nowhere to dump our garbage the problem is that woman. Oh my gosh. Get him out of here. Cartwright. Get oh him out of here. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un American, unstable, and. You're not better than anyone. Shut Teddy. you up. Just Shut him up. Shut him up. It Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Hey. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. Cut him off! I guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when Shut him I up. take office. Shut him up! The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. Yeah. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. What kind of ad do I got in here? Ooh, 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 I got the bad batches of ads. Ooh, so I got between Teddy Gallows Jr. Mayor's promo, or I got the thing that the dad died thinking that he was going to help him. Time to play a commercial. I'm thinking, Peggy! Deadly Master of the Martial Arts exclusive. Oh, no, this is awful. This is the worst timing. Can I do a different thing? Did we promote this? We did. <laughs> okay. Here it is. <laughs> ancient wisdom. Do you want to double your power? Yes. Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? 24 then Step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate. Kung and Rate. receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator. The discipline of the tarantula. The speed of the tuna. The poise of the scorpion. And the wisdom of the bullfrog. Using classified <laughs> techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Jeez. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555-7861-USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. All right. Perfect timing for that. Did I do it? Did I do it? 
Don't tell me because I took it out too early. It's because I took it out too early. Oh my gosh. Do you seek ancient wisdom? It's so loud. It's in my head. Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior? All right, let's lower that. Because obviously I messed up. <laughs> You gonna put chicken seasoning on fish? Ew. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> this man doesn't like his vegetables. Dude, imagine trying to give Tyler a freaking piece of broccoli. I wonder if fried vegetables would work for Tyler. Fried vegetables are just like heavily buttered vegetables. Because I feel like heavily buttered vegetables at that point just don't even taste like vegetables. Not gonna lie, veggies are disgusting. Anna, you too? It depends on the veggies. Like, I'm not gonna recommend anyone Brussels sprouts. But I'll recommend someone broccoli. I think broccoli is just the worst to cook. Oh, I did miss something at the end. If you buy today, you'll receive two additional VHS Two additional VHS? The tornado technique and karate lovemaking. Wow. All today. Jesus. There we go. Know, after what happened with Murphy, I think. Yeah, we should take that out of rotation. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was uh, thinking. Uh, whoops. Shame, though, it is pretty fun. Yeah, I bet karate love making sure is something. Ooh, you trying to say uh, something, Peggy? I, uh, <laughs> Peggy, you want to do something? Peggy, I can get Let's in that room right now. Just show. open the door, Peggy. Peggy, just Apologies open the door, Peggy. Come on now, Peggy. I think it's fair to say that's one deal you can skip. But what you can't skip oh, are we is radioing? what caller has to say. Caller on line one. Hey, caller on line one. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hello? Hello? Caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy on TV and my friend. I, I think he's killed some of them already. Um. That's him. What? He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it. Kid. Hey, listen, hey, listen. I already killed a kid today, okay? I already killed Eugene. You know, I think we need to have her equal it out. Maybe her and him can find love in the afterlife. You know what I mean? Can you fight back? Do you have any kind of weapon with you? Something Did you hear our <laughs> Did you hear the back? promo? Can you fight back? Oh my god. Oh my god. You stay with me, kid. Focus. You're dead. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me. What's your name? Yeah, what's your name so we can put it in the obituary? Come on! Come on! Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Don't call her, sweetie. She's gonna be dead in a second. Carrie. Hey, good, Carrie. Good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there. Alright? Now, where are you? The old murder house. The old murder house? I'm at the end of the hall. I don't got that. I don't got that map. Wait, where's this old murder house? Why are you in an old jazz studio? Why are you in the old murder house? You talking about the Lorme estate? At Helen Falls? Alright. Uh, go potty! Go tinkle before you die! Okay, I'll... He's here. Uh-oh. Everyone pay respects to our girl. Run! Run! Yeah, she was running, all right. Uh. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I didn't mean to click that one. Oh no! Jeez. Wow. Forrest! Why are you yelling at 
at me. You were so calm with the other people dying. What? 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 Are you... Are you kidding me? Okay, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke, jeez. Jeez. Wait, wow, this guy sounds like a piece of cake. Piece of cake? This is funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy... Er, you made me angry. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? <gasps> I love how he announces Michael, his name. Man. Forrest Nash, just you don't know fun. me? That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. Yeah, break up with him. You're sick, Jimmy. He's out there, Jimmy. Go home, Jimmy. Uh, he's out there, Jimmy. You know he's really out there tonight, Jimmy, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just whistling night, man. That little idiot. Bro, you're gonna pay. Stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Oh no. Who, uh, who are you? Oh no, Dad. Let's go! Jimmy, go say hi to Eugene for me! Everyone, get inside! That's crazy. Holy cannoli! I'm shaking. I'm shivering. I'm quivering. As long as he's out there, and we're in here, we're safe, right? No. You're time. Much. Where is this murder house? We have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Yeah, we got good music. You, Carrie. My friend, we drove out to the old murder house. Old murder house. Of course. The van. Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. <sighs> Jimmy. Haha, <laughs> Jimmy died. Haha, uh -huh, so funny. Guys, lighten up! Lighten up! You guys are just mad at him! Lighten up! It's a solution! It's go it's not going to be okay. Not in my hands. Uh, see, look, Peggy's agreeing already. Focus. Stay focused, stay focused, Carrie. Focus. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I'm here. Also, she we'll doesn't sound like out. a kid. I don't know. You, there's gotta be a way she to must be, like, this. 17. Just sit tight, okay? Heather. Genie? Genie? Genie McPherson? Our intern Genie? Bro, does everyone here just have like individual names? There's no one here with duplicate names. She stayed in tonight. Fourth, listen. We'll see what we can come up with. And uh What? Scott, you're not any good at and no, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to everything okay? Okay. All right. But I. Shut up! You. Forrest, I'll call you back. And I don't know anything about your friend. All right then. Ugh. These damn kids never learn. Yeah, stupid kids, and that's why they all deserve to die. They're, They're just, just dumb, dumb kids. kids. Ugh. They do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right. <clears throat> Folks, we're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. One eighty-nine. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here. An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know. Wow, rude. Sure why we took on an intern? We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs. I heard. All right. Oh. Let's see if I can find her desk. Hopefully, she has something we can use. All right, let's go. Adventure time. Okay. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Ooh, do we always get to hear her footsteps? I don't remember being this blessed to hear them. It sounds awful. Oh, I got scared of the old coffee thing. Get out of here. Turn on the music. Gosh, 
Hello? I got a weapon! <laughs> you heard that? It's heavy. Jeez. They really tucked Dude, you Dude, they away. didn't even give her a chair! She just sits on a freaking crate with a pillow! <gasps> That's awful. Alright. Man, this is cozy, you know? Is this Genie? Yeah, we saw this. Oh, we didn't read this one. Alone? Aww. Dude, you drawing on your desk? What are you, from high school? Okay, so this thing? Friendship quiz. <gasps> this might work. It had no reason to fall. No, no reason. Stupid freaking game. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna snap my own neck getting this scared. Give myself whiplash. Oh, okay. Well, most likely to peak Mount Everest. Most likely to win the award for worst poker face. Uh, most likely to end up in prison. Most likely to escape prison. Most likely to become an Olympic athlete. Uh, most likely, what's PTO? Most likely to pass their driving test without any errors. Rip Jimmy. Most likely to win an Oscar. Most likely to beat everyone at go-karting. Most likely to trip while running in a horror movie. Most likely to end up in a car crash. Dang. Okay, so we got like a lot of like driving related ones. Hey, I'm back, baby. Back in action hey, like a fraction. Can you find anything that'll help us out? Think yeah, so. I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Hot Carrie's online one. Whenever you're ready. Jeannie and Carrie's friendship quiz. Don't Time you dare. To turn the music off. This is Forrest Nash back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes. We've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. Okay. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first. We'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. Heather! We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather! Heather's great for it. Oops. Heather! Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. <laughs> Part two. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Okay, uh, that's gonna be Jennifer. Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Gosh, I hate how this is. Anyway, side. that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. Okay. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... Be that way. At least she's real about it. Uh, oh, this plan is impressive. This plan is long. This plan is ambitious. This plan is, uh, well, it's ambitious. Thank you. You're doing <laughs> What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between. Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Ooh, most likely become an Olympic athlete? Uh, Hot David seems to be the best at it. Hot David! Hot David. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you spend a lot of time running shirtless. Ho ho! You got this, Hot David. You got this, Hot David. Okay. Distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and take the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Okay. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid team. So let's use that against him. Part five. We trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Ooh. Who would make the most believable lead? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy. Oh, uh, I mean, we got most likely to win an Oscar. So Lisa and Tammy's 50-50? Uh, um, 
Anything about Lisa and the team? Most likely to win the award for worst poker face. So Cynthia's out of the question, right? And Tammy has a thing on that too. So maybe we should do Lisa. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect. <laughs> take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. All right. Part six. Woo, this Lisa thing is. To drive us through the woods, then back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be? Who have we got? Chad. Scott. Cynthia. Oh, whatever. Forrest. Most likely to beat everyone at go-karting is Scott, but most likely to end up in a car crash is also Scott. And then would they say Cynthia or Chad? I think we're gonna go with Chad. Um, because we got to take an effect of the car crash one, and Cynthia and Scott are on it, but Chad is not on it. So let's go. Let's go, Chad. Chad. Yeah, Thanks. Chad. We'll just take a few seconds to and it's go time. Let's do Thank it! You. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. I know. I'm the best. Right? Impressive as hell, right? Damn straight. Now let's see if anyone dies. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, ooh. Am I just waiting? Am I supposed to be playing music? Oh, the oh. kids are back already. Line one again. All right, all right. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Woo! Round of applause, round of applause. Vines. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Okay. Don't die! <laughs> all right, hit it! All righty then. Hit it. You got this. I think I nailed it. I actually do think I nailed it. Because he can run. Carrie. What was it? Oh, 
was that? Okay. You're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. We did it! Uh, don't forget Jeannie? Oh yeah, don't forget Jeannie. Yeah, bruh. Don't forget Jeannie. Her friendship quiz saved the day. Told you she was the best. Jeannie's just the best. Woo! Oh, I keep forgetting that's not cheering. Okay what now. is wrong with my brain? Somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Peace! Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out we did it! to Jimmy's parents. Nah, screw Jimmy! Awful screw Jimmy! Any kids Break Jimmy! In, please stay inside. And stay safe. And parents... Hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. All right. All right. We saved him. Let's go. All teens except Jimmy survived. <laughs> hey, we had a call come in. Another one. Horace Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16. The, the scream. scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest, I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink. Nice. Everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starlink Security here earlier installing the Starlink 4000 system. So wow. I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky. And I now consider you a friend, my man. Oh, nice. Um, you talk a lot? <laughs> you sure talk a lot. It's just passion, man. I, I got a lot of thoughts going on, you know? Oh, so yeah. Like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. No, Roller? Yeah. Back then, things were pretty rough. Dang. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time. Even <laughs> I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Bro, you're yapping. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. You can always change your life around. I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. Sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I Heck yeah. Again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's True. The first step. Make that right, Max. Oh. Oh. Oh, hello, Max. <laughs> hello, Max. <laughs> She's so funny. Uh, we've gone to the dogs. <laughs> there it is, folks. We've officially gone to the dogs. Come on, Forrest. Max is the best guest we've had. Yes, he is. He's not even here, Peggy. Max is my emotional support dog. Oh. He's a rescue dog. But I always say he's the one that rescued me. Aww. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro.
bro. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxi loves the rink, man. Uh -huh. Is that another train, Maxi? Uh -huh. Maxi loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. You're a great pair. <laughs> Sounds like you two make a great Ooh, pair. That was a big fumble. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. If we man, make it. This talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something what do I you want? To, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Uh, yeah, I think we'll take it down. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? We haven't done this one, have we? we? Oh, you got it, man. Peace. Peace. Hello, folks. This next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. It's a little mellow. Here comes one of my favorites. I really needed that call, you know? After everything. Yeah, I get that. You talk a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, <laughs> Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Really? Already? Come on, you get to finish the song. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Nice. Hey, I I just... Gay! Okay. Okay. Holy cow. I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. Ooh, what, you got victim's I, guilt. Why, why? Or survivor why, guilt, my bad. Why did he spare? Because you were what so hot. Why let me go? Because you're so hot. He saw you as a victim. He got bored. He saw you as a victim. He wanted the pranksters. Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I... Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? I, I Who mean, wouldn't? Why wait all these years to... Why do this now? These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. You gotta start pressing charges on these people. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? We didn't even get to finish Roller Rickies! What song? Any song by Blast Pro Center. Who? And... Thank you. This next one. Goes out to care. What if I just don't? I just had Blast Processor on. Alright. Alright, whatever. You win! You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well... It's something to consider. That's true. Man, we messed up a lot of people tonight. Stretch your legs. Now's the time. I'm stretching. Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Peggy, I am so ready for another thing. Let me kill someone, please. We could run another segment or scratch that for us. We have a caller. Let's go. Hello. Oh, you make me want to stop the music, don't you? Yep. Of course you do, you little. You're through to 189.16. Man, the static that's coming in. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, hey. Oh, the call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. So, um, I'm glad the girls didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. We don't have your song. You play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? My Peggy. Yes. Oh. You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? 
Maybe another song? We don't have it. I'll play a track for you, Don, but maybe pick another one. We don't exactly have that one in rotation right now. No, of course. You do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. For real? I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. I want to get second to grab it. No. Nope. I'm sorry, Don. I'm just not going out there. Oh, but I think you will, Forrest. Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest. What does she want this song so bad for? Uh, well, folks, play my song. Play you. my While song. I, I really need my song. Is she serious, Peggy? She's stupid. She's That's what she is. Where's this murder house? That's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about? I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? So. If she's telling the truth. No. Yeah, I don't know. She sucks. I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to go out there. I'm not going out there. Forest, someone might be in danger. Let them die. I've Despite killed three. Being so damn curmudgeonly. I think you... Stop it, Peggy. Just... Oh, fine. Yeah, Let me out. Let I'll me out. You the, key to the, fire the fours. Wait, the fours. Wait, our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, the it's, fours. Uh, you know, I never thought about it. Push it. To we should talk to Reggie about that later. Limit. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Push. Maybe I'll even get a caller. I got that it. I just need to keep going. <sighs> yep. The scream. Yep. With me. Come on, Peggy. Let me free. All right. All right. Woo! That was a workout. Fire door. Don want to kill you? I hope not. The frick is Dawn up here with this stupid song for? Is this my fire exit? A blinky? No. Oh, is it the one down? Is it the one back here that's like actually unlocked? Hello. I don't wanna. Why is it so red? What are we living? You know. I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open. Alone. <gasps> All alone. You know what? You're not alone. You have me. Your conscience who is killing everybody. There ain't no one there. This is the door that we went through. You have no right to be that loud. Oh. Oh, what are these for? Okay. Also, what window could you have possibly thrown that out of? Locked door. Got it. talk about that that we just saw the whistling man or at this point whistling woman All right. <clears throat> which window would she have thrown it out of what is this for what is this Don I saw you the barn find here it is long ride home all right so we're not trusting Don that's good to know. What's back here? More of the... Dude, that is like un... un... justifiably loud. You back here, Don? Hey. Hey! Uh, you back here, Don? Is this where you're hiding the bodies? Where's the face, Don? Oh. 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 Back out. Okay. I'm gonna... I don't know what this is for, but I'm gonna do- I'm gonna just plug this in. It says 70, so I'm assuming I need to equal out to 70. So we got 25 in there, and then the one over here is 30, so then that's 55. 
Um, then we just need another 20. I mean, like she said, they're, uh, the killer is miles away. Supposedly. And yet, right here? At the, at the little thingy? Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Also, what a messy alleyway. Dude, this is disgusting. Gonna catch a freaking STD from back here. I better have some good boots on. Don't want to step on any needles. Are one of these a 20? This one. Alright, I don't know what this does, but I'm doing it. Oh, it's for that. Oh, it's for an elevator. Huh. Gosh, I wish I could run. I'm so slow. And... Doink. Doink. No? 20, 20, 40, uh, 70. Oh, 75. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. I need the 15. Uh, doy. I'm messing up over here. Gosh, dang it. Now I gotta walk all the way back. This is so slow. <laughs> it's so weird seeing all the dumpster lids open. <laughs> they kind of look like mouths. Here we go. I've been playing the Dreamlight Valley update, and it's been fun. I, on the stream, I maxed out solely in that, and then I am, like, five tasks away from doing this, finishing up the star path, which is nice. Then I've been decorating. City builds are stressful. Alright, here we go. There we go. Look at that little rainbow. Bingo. There we go. Get access to the station after being locked. Oh, I was locked out? I was locked out? Wait a minute. <laughs> was I really? Oh yeah, because there's no handle. Of course. It locks behind me. Yeah. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Yeah. Fantastic. I could probably survive that fall. Ooh. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door. Wait. Or elevator or something. Wait, close this. What are you doing? You just saw the killer and you're gonna leave this open? Close it. What's wrong with us? Why do we have no common sense? Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive? <gasps> A Clive? Oh my gosh. What the? Ooh, ooh, ooh. What? Why? What the hell? Peggy is not going to believe this. What? Why is there one just under the desk? What are these mannequins for? Okay, I don't even know where to look first. What are these people? Okay, so the newspapers aren't legible. Dude, that... I'm going to die here. This is my death. <laughs> Looks like my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. We got uh, Keith Walker, Marie Campbell, Stanley King, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, I don't, Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody? I don't know why that sounds familiar. Hospital, gas station, trailer park, power station, call for donations, help Chuck Brody, former Gallows High School, suffer career ending injury as a victim of the festival disaster late last year to help him on his road to recovery we're bringing lottery tickets that's literally just giving the money instead hopefully he gets lucky and gets back on his feet uh drop tickets okay there's so much information here is your car safe 24 hour gas station bought by local lottery ex local ex lottery winner local legend takes to manhattan what uh, and on we would like to Kim Walker and Peter. What's the point of all this? I don't know. Okay. Oh, hello. Oh, there's a key. I'll just take that. Hello. Be important. Ah! Hello. Okay. All right. Ew. What is this? Very nice. Do we just like bump into everything? Do we have wacky inflatable tube arms? I wonder how the show's going. It's going great. 
what is got it okay so now we just have easy access to the outside and so does anything else that wants to get inside and here we are all right let's go back outside again <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> we can't all right yep this is the right way like nothing happened ba, 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 ba. hey it says on air now Da, 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 ba, da, ba, da. Hey! Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for Jesus Forest, you've been gone for ages. I think Ow, complaining. Happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. Clive's not the murderer. What? Ain't no so way. The, uh, the fire door lock on my roof. Oh, I thought it was like glitching out. <laughs> No, just speeding of time. 240! Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell. What did I heave? And I don't like standing around down there. Oh, there. I heaved. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen and Aunt Lily. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's right. And we've got to find him. <sighs> you said there are four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're gonna have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. How will Hit I know? If you need any help. How will I know? What? Oh, okay, so the circle ones are the ones that are getting hit. Okay. Festival disaster. Oh my gosh, this is gonna kill my brain. Uh, Gallows Creek Harvest Festival closed after a tragedy struck only hours after opening. The big wheel broke free from this porch, rolled through investigation, it's currently underway. So the festival is tied to this guy who made this guy. So there those guys are tied. And then what Gallows Creek game day? Who is this? Number 13? Oh, is that Chuck Brody? So Chuck Brody is also this guy. Okay. Trailer cheap for sale. Uh, I'm sick of being a local celebrity. People are so mean to me. I only stole a few cars. Who cares? I'm buying a new one. Selling my trailer. <laughs> um, so someone left town. Someone who's stealing cars. Justice for festival victims. Two year investigations conclude investigators blame two engineers that were contracted in from a local power station. Lead engineer Ant Williams. Okay, yep. And junior engineer Sean Everett. No. So this is about Aunt Williams. Okay. So Aunt Williams. Eh. And power station is power station hires 12 new staff, which are Gallows Creek. So he might be at the power station. And then. What does this say? Has been sold by a man who won the lottery 14 years ago. The new owner claims it will keep me busy in the evening. He has asked to remain anonymous. So that's Chuck Brody. Because he won. Do you care about safety? Is your car safe? Sheriff Matthews wants citizens to look out for suspicious. Uh... Kim Walker? She's getting married? To who? 70 okay what i'm i this is this this is infamous author <laughs> moves out gallows creek uh she stole our cars and then she stole our time and money so it's a girl who stole the cars and she leaves right she leaves uh yeah, she's gone. Who? So the girl, the girl, one of these girls is gone. 
Oh, maybe it's Rebecca Allen because she was in the car club. Uh, Rebecca Allen, car club. She just, she just gone. She left. Um, what? Tuesday, Sunday, September 6th. What day is it? It's the third. Uh, do you care about health and safety? Good. Then come on down to the yearly convention. Featuring special mystery guest. Uh, lead engineer responsible for the gallows. Oh. They say you learn from your mistakes. I turned mine into a career. Uh, local doctor K Walker recommends all locals in their flu shot ASAP. The flu is using the pines in 84 is no different than you to make sure you are protected. So Kim Walker Hospital. Police have finally put an end to the long arrest and made after. Uh so this is Rebecca Allen. So yeah, she stole the cars and she left. Tried to shut Gallows Creek yesterday afternoon after a bus failed to stop and crashed the fuel tank. A deceased had been identified as Gallows Creek locals. Uh, Mr. D. Rudd. Mr. Miss K. Stein. Oh, so she- K Kim is dead. Okay. So she is deceased. And so- and she worked at the hospital. She was in the trailer park, but she sold and left. And then- so we got gas station. And power station guy. Um, okay, he wants to be anonymous. Nothing about that there. Okay, and that's just it breaking. Yeah, so he can still easily be around. And then this guy... Uh... 1969? This is in 69. This is in 87. Do you... Oh, man... Get started in career. Uh, wait, maybe he's not here. Quiet Ridge Health and Safety Convention today through Sunday, 6th of September. So maybe he's not around. So maybe it's the gas station. Okay. Chuck Brody at the gas station. Locking it in. How's it going? Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. I did my best. Let's do it. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Chuck Brody. Chuck Brodo. Chuck Brody Odo. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas station. The fart man. The fart station man. The gas station. Okay. I'm dialing. One moment. Oh man, I'm stressed out. This better be it. This better be it. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Chuck Brody! Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistling Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The Whistling Man? Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Forrest Nash. Listen, Forrest Nash! <laughs> the way he says it. This is Forrest Nash! Tea? Forget what? Oh, you know what? Maybe you should run. Quit talking and run. I, I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck. <laughs> Jesus! It sounds like something blew up. Oh, see, I wish we could see it. Now? I, I, is Chuck? I don't know. He should Hang be on. alive. I'm getting a call. Hello? Yeah! Chuck, Chuck survived! Chuck. Boris, the whole goddamn gas station's gone up. You're welcome! Hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell. Of no. course, as you do. Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. It's okay, Chuck. Boris, man. I can't thank you enough, but yeah, I gotta go. Bye. Wait, I. Damn it, we lost him. What was that about today? What happened today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right, everybody. All right, get ready for.
What's this song? What's so special about this song? Careful with this next track, listeners. It's dynamite. Forest. Heck yeah! <laughs> Don't get mad at me, Peggy. Come on now. There's nothing. There's no lyrics in this song. The song. I, there's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. What? I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. What? Me too. Alright, bye. What am I gonna do down there? Die? What's the point? I don't wanna die. I like to live. Alright, what's going on down here? Ooh, at least the radio's there. Yeah, that song has no lyrics. I thought there would be, like, lyrics or something to help, like, figure out what it is. Alright, none of the- all those are locked. Cool. Wait, no, we got a key for something, didn't we? Locked tight. Locked tight. Alright. Alrighty. I see. Hello? Anyone here to kill me? I'll have you know I'm not fun to kill. Hello? No one. Well, that's good, at least. No one's staring at me, huh? Through these clouded windows. What could be in here? What? Hmm. A key? Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Oh, because the board was here, maybe. Basement storage. Basement storage. Gosh, that door is still wide open we are going to die we will be perishing tonight basement storage ah hey, <gasps> peggy give me some warning before yelling down the intercom my goodness Find the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it okay what what's over there there's so much going on in there i see it okay what yeah, I see that. What? What? How do I... Where's the intercom? What is that? Oh, is that like PC stuff? Is this the olden times PC? Hello? Where's the intercom? Is this it? Hey! What have you found, Forrest? I think I need to keep looking. Alright then. Find the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. I ma'am! Uh, I found that. Peggy, I found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Your mom. Looks mold. like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Where? Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Uh, right now? I mean, oh, yeah, because there's something in here. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, there we go. Uh. I doubt it was Clive. Ooh, I'm on the desk. He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Find the intercom when you found something. I'm ready to die! Oh. Why? Why the flickering light? It's so creepy. What? Oh, I'm so screwed. This is so much information. Alright. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That marks the time of death. Okay. Alright. Ooh, all right. Small lacerations to arm 
This looks useful. Ooh, George Barrow, he died. Okay. This is a long while ago. I mean, what papers do I keep? Okay. Time. What? Am I supposed to, like... Ooh, it's so creepy. Am I supposed to bring these somewhere? Um, that's not the right order. I want to make sure I'm hitting the right... This is definitely not the right order. What is this for? Um... No, I made it all the way to the end. <laughs> before I even... Oh man, of course I do that. Where is this next one? It's in a shelf somewhere. Uh... Not there, dude. That looks like cocaine wrapped up. Are we doing drugs over here? Are we the drug, the drug addicts? Oh, system stuff, okay. So we might have to come back here? Okay, so I'm really just like missing it at this point. I must have walked past it by now. Oh, here it is, oh my gosh. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. Okay. Stress before death. I think that's quite a normal uh, thing you would expect. Additionally, there appears to be a post mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. Ew. Okay, so I'm assuming this is the last bit because it didn't give us a hint. If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the? I'm a man who likes to stay informed. I've got subscriptions to newspapers. Ooh, all over the a new vinyl for my collection. <laughs> the bus accident. You don't know me? I'm Forrest Nash. I'm Forrest Nash. How does he say it? Forrest Nash. Jeez, you don't know me? Also, I think this may seem like nothing, but look at this. Look at this. I never knew. I, I don't know. I'm telling you. Yes, I've seen this game, but I've never seen this detail. Humpty Dumpty, Story of Love, Tragedy and Betrayal, starring Maisie Cartwright as Dawn. And we know a Don. And George Barrow as Henry, and then Marie Campbell as Anne. And George Barrow is the one who died. So, I think there's a little detail in this. I think this is... Because I think that the lady outside is a killer. And ain't no way a killer is just going to give her full identification. Hello? What have you found, Forrest? 
It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Has to be for George. George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. Do we? I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. How did drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a take about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. Lies. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. You don't trust Post Peggy? Injury. Apparently his arm. What if Peggy is in on it? But Peggy door. seems young. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. <laughs> the written report I found doesn't mention that. Maisie Cartwright How and Mary Campbell. He he Unless he got it when the police collected his body, I guess someone else must have moved it after he was dead to where he was eventually found. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. What is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra, the jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah. What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Oh. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? The reservoirs don't have tides. But that's oh, what yeah, the police there's no report woods. said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. Yeah, she got an A, Forrest Nash. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting, then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that, I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. Okay. I um I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. R.I.P. Clive! I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. That's Clive, true. Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't so what happened to him? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clyde. I'm sorry for thinking you killed all those people. Yeah, you should be sorry, Peggy. Trying to... Change blame. There's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Find the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Do you think you found everything for us? I think there's got to be more down what? here. What? I need to find all the tapes. Okay. Shh. Well, Shh. There are more tapes, I thought I got there are all the tapes. To follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right then. Find the intercom and find something and want to discuss it. Okay, so let's just go in order again, maybe. Mmm, we don't need that right now. 
now. What is this for? Oh, wait, hospital security. Radio station client opted for manual installation. Apartment is unable to install. Require new parts. New installation date September fifth. Ricky's roller rink. Uh, is that useful anyway? No, I doubt. So what did I miss out on? So we watched that one. Then there's this one. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. We're gonna keep this. So let's put this out here. And we'll make a couple trips. Hmm. Okay. I don't understand what else I could be missing. I feel like I'm being so thorough. I feel like I was doing so good. You guys just tell me off that I'm not. Okay. Of inebration. Mm. Unless there was like another tape here. Like, what's this thing? Maybe there was, and I wasn't paying attention. <gasps> yeah. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life now this and was chased, important. resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Someone's covering up a murderer! There is a murderer upon us! Alright, um... So... Now we can talk to the pegster. The peggingster. The peggies! Hey, girl. What have you found, Forrest? In another I found tea. comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. So she agreed with us. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded the doctor, uh, Dr. Sullivan, to stop recording. Dr. Sullivan? Mm, it's a lie on Wait, this paper, too. Virginia Sullivan? She was her caller from earlier. Well, then our caller was involved in the conspiracy around this boy's death. We need to call her back once we finish down here. It, it looks like she might know something about what's going on. Wait, wait. I found a written autopsy report. Yeah. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. Yes. Yes, we established this. I think so. Yes. Forrest, what's going on here? Tea. Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. Boiling hot tea is occurring. To make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. I have multiple hands and these are sheets of paper. Can I please just take this all upstairs? 3 a.m. My goodness. Thank <gasps> God Yay! you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Ah, uh, you don't. That's why you start being mean. Beats me. <laughs> Beats me. But we gotta do it and we're going to. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. Alright, I'll get There's Marie Campbell. 
okay for us? Shut the music off. Uh, Marie Campbell, there's no Maisie Cartwright here or George Barrow, but Marie Campbell's there. When you're ready, shut the music off. Girl, 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 you act like I have not been here for nearly four hours. Are you kidding me? I got this. Don't you worry. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. All right. Virginia! Virginia! It's Goose. Sure. Her, it's Goose. <laughs> goose, 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 goose. Where are you? Get your ass here. The party has moved. Sorry, bro. Oh, cool. Where's it moved to? This old lady's house. Oh, she's pretty cool, though. Rude. Dude, she said we could raid her liquor cabinet if we stayed and protected her. Of course, we're not drinking. Staying sharp in case that whistling turd turns back. You know what? Valid. The old lady might need our help. Of course, man. Of course. So it's insinuated that. Hey, could you put me on with what? The these no, two, three got it's killed? Cool for me to drop by. What happened? No, this one's just gone. Respect we love. <laughs> I'll grab her now. Uh, <laughs> Is this goose? Is this goose? No, it's four smash. Hey. Uh, Dr. Sullivan. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumping. I would be too if I was a liar. A dirty liar. A dirty liar lying about death. I'd be jumpy too. I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy too. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Don't Virginia. be sorry. I thought I was. I thought... Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Mm hmm Me? What would I know? You know. You know. Any guesses? Or would she know about Clive? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. no. Exactly. She wouldn't know. I don't know that name. Oh, she's lying. You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. <gasps> I yeah. Don't know what I said then? I was petrified for us. Mm -mm -mm, liar. At our station. And we know you spoke to him in the past. And we know he's dead and you killed him. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. He's already had. Yeah, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's not the whistling man. Uh, we have evidence that he's not the whistling man. We found evidence to the contrary. Contrary. Uh, it's true. And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. You liar. I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... Okay. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over Oh, the so he was the guy with the deep voice. I found, of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. See, that's messed up. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. Dang. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment. Dang. If I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. Dang. I don't know why he had me do it, but... My sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. 
We understand. I don't. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Peggy. Yeah. I don't. You helped cover up the death of a child. Forrest. I, but he threatened me. D and my but, sister. Uh, you but, uh, your power uh, to uh, help yourself. Uh, uh, God. Yeah. Forrest, that wasn't necessary. <laughs> it needed to be said. Yeah, I didn't realize she was going to end the call. <gasps> Woo. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Oh, yes, Why she is. Why to keep quiet about George's death? But for who? Why cover up these details? Uh, same reason why people cover well, up really no heinous Sandra was involved in George's acts death. for fame you call her? to keep their Dirt. title. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one oh. who discovered it, but something just. We talk about right jazz club lady. Hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. Oh yeah, I she does. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Oh come don't on! Push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. Fine. Right. Calling her now. We do want Hopefully all the details. She's at jazz studio. Hopefully she's at her chess studio. <laughs> you uh, mad at me, Pegster? Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Bedazz Jazz Studio. <laughs> jazz Bedazz Hello Jazz again, Studio. Sandra, it's for Snatch of 189.16 The Screen. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. How jazzy. Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying mm. to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. Who's this guy? We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you ask. Ho, ho, ho. <gasps> Naked jazz time. Oh, uh, we'll be serious. That sounds nice. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then too. <laughs> You've got Wink. my number. Wonk. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Oh yes, the there is. You called Forrest. Of course. What are you wearing? Why the whistling man might have targeted you. Oh yeah, that. Pardon the devil. He's just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, I mean, we think I believe that. We're chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Ooh, she is so quick, quick to close it off. You found the body. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. Mm, mm, I would so... Ooh, I would so just be harsh, but it's okay. It's okay, Sandra. We, we know. know. You do? You know about? You we know about yes. you're a dirty liar. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. You understand? Oh yes, because your studio means more than the family who suffered the death. Uh, we have to be nice. We have to be nice. <sighs> sure, I understand. So he owned it. Sandra? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... He... Uh, I'm sorry. I can't... I did my best. I could have roasted the crap out of that girl, and I did She's my done. best. I don't think that could have gone any better. Yeah, thank you. Really did great for us. Wasting well, my time. Folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please. Frick this stupid call song. In. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. What? No. Ooh, we got the new Tiger song, actually. Is this it? Hold on. Is that the Tiger song? Hold on. Wait, is it? Hold on. I, I should take this call. I know, I know, I know. Hello. Welcome to 189.16, The Stream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. 
But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. Are you a vampire? Why do you sound like that? Also, you are Ponty. I already can tell from the accent. You sound like these, like a vampire, but you still got that other accent. No. No, I don't want to. Oh, come on. It's his birthday. I want no. to do it again until next year. Exactly. Well, Forrest. Uh, hey, why give me the choice? What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. He's my uncle, Ronnie. Yeah, what's up, his Ronnie? First name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh, my God damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals of money packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start hanging just You son of a bitch, stop calling us. <laughs> Damn it, this is your fault. Yeah, Peggy, it's all your fault. You should I said know. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. Mostly me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. No, it's all you. <sighs> We've already got another caller on the What's line. That? Angry. Pick it up, okay? You make me so angry, Peggy. This is 189.16. Oh, she's like, she's fine with me not turning off the music. Now. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. All right. All right. <laughs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza. Okay. All right. Peggy, hang up on him. <laughs> All right, we are going to send an airstrike Forest? to Ponty. Forest? Are you okay? Airstrike him. <laughs> We're so angry. Airstrike him. I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? Sorry. Sorry, that was... That was too much. Airstrike. Okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready! Folks, don't spend your money <laughs> at Bonnie's Pizza. That's <laughs> all I'm gonna say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream. With me, Forrest Nash. Forrest Nash. He's calling. Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Hi, Don. What's your song? Long ride home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Long ride I home. I now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Long ride home. Hold on. Who made Long Ride Home? The barn finds. No. Long ride home. Maybe it's just the title, like, Long Ride Home, because they took a long ride to kill these other people first, maybe? Uh, no. We had a deal. Don, we had a deal. Kept my end. Who is the next target? Oh, it's too late for that now. I'll be the judge of that. Oh, fine. Chuck Brody was the next target, but that ah. ship sailed. She doesn't sound happy with that. You should have said... How'd you know? How did you know it was Chuck? Well, if I tell you, I might just put more people in danger. People are already in danger. Yeah. This might help. Force, I don't have time. I need your help. No, you don't. Do you mean... I don't believe yes, you. he's after me now. Good. I, I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Mm-mm. No. Right. Right. Okay. Tell us everything. Oh, I thought it was going to be like, I right. I following a lead, trying to work out who would be next after Chuck. And what happened? No one named Dawn is attached to any of this so far. Especially if these were the next targets. Plus there's more that are the targets, I don't know. Ask a neighbor, go elsewhere. Can you go somewhere else? Go home is the safest place I can be. Please. The front gate requires an entry code to open. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment I don't believe you. Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building. It's a and a trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. 
Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. You sound really carried tonight. Shit. The dog? I'm sorry. A dog? Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing and oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any. It's coming down the street. I don't think he's seen it yet. Before his movie, he can try There's no whistling. The code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. There's no whistling. Can you get your neighbor's attention? Mm, no. What's your neighbor's name? I don't know my neighbors, remember? Please, I need to get in. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000 is keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Uh. Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very. We don't hear him yeah, though. We can hear the music though. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. She does not sound in distress all right, at all. Folks, here's a little tune for Everyone you else had a shaky joy. voice. I screaming, crying. Mmm. You were pretty quiet there. There's a little doggy too. Forrest, was it just me? Or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at K-Town. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Yeah, I know where it is. I'm not sure who. Don't worry, I'll go get it. Let me just, you know... Yeah. Oh, wow. Immediate freedom? What is this? <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments and somewhere... Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Yeah, we know. Long walk, you know, long walk. I think it's... Down? No, it's not down there. Needs a key. Wait, is it? Shoot. It is. Right? How do I not remember? I'm not getting in there tonight. I, I, I'm so dumb. It's down here. It was with the other stuff. No, it's not there. Here it is. There we go. It's back. Here it is. Starling 4000. User manual. So, like... Ah, these codes should come Starling in Starling Security, Atkins, delivery, delivery address. Starling must have left this by accident. The system's not even installed at Woodside. Requires new parts to install. Okay. All right. I don't trust her. I'm not helping her. She won't. She refuses to get helps from her neighbors or even try. There's no whistling, but you can hear literally everything else around her. Um, no, I no. All right, let's see. Please change the codes immediately. So let's do alarm test. Ooh, I keep going that way. We'll do alarm test, and maybe they'll get her. Hopefully killed. Ha ha ha. You want me to play a song for you? No matter. You will die now. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? Hi. Starling 4000 security Hi. manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Yeah, it's got a bunch. A bunch Did meaning four. I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Heck yeah! Is that crazy? No, let's call him! I don't him. know what you'd say, but... Yeah! Yeah! That might be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. <gasps> Roller Ricky! Through. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll 
take care of this one way or another. Okay, if you say so. Yeah, she doesn't trust Donna either. I think this when is like ready, all over. Oh, now you're telling me to shut the music off after all this time? Whenever you're ready. Done. Are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. 16. I've been so afraid. What's the code to the gate? I've been so afraid. Uh, we're giving the alarm test code. Ain't no way I'm about to do this. Alarm test! The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Look at that. So calm. You little rat! Yes! Yes! My goodness! Is she? Ricky's place inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. Oh, Horace, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was a whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folks, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know. I oh. heading back inside. You gotta barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free. You Let's go! Forever. Yeah! Done, Peggy, you. raise your arms! I... Thanks, Ricky. Oh. Woo! Woo Talk to you soon. Oh. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music. Let's go! What just happened. Oh, that was the hint. Wait a minute, that was the hint. That the order form says it wasn't even installed yet. So there is no security system at the Woodside Apartments. So the only most recent one that could be tied to it at all would be Ricky. I get it now. I was like, not installed, so that's why like these codes work. No, it's not installed, so the codes can't work. I get it. My brain. Oh, the whistling man is a is whammy. It woman. Uh. Yeah, it worked out. Oh. It. Uh. Suspicions. I had my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. Oh. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Ah, twice. She seemed pretty normal. I knew she wasn't right. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek. <laughs> I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Uh, yeah. Big brain Why over here. She requested that song? Uh, to get me outside to Methusa's. Maybe she actually wanted it. I mean, it's very convenient. Long ride home. I don't see anything special with it. To get me outside would just show that she's the killer, because that's what we saw. To mess with us makes no sense. Didn't you say that you heard it for years? Is that tied to it? Maybe she actually wanted it. Could be her favorite No, song. that's dumb. Ugh, that's awful. No. So, what now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Boop. Okay, you're live in three, two. Hey, folks, this is for. <laughs> I didn't mean here. to click I that. <laughs> hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman okay. one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. I doubt, though, because that's not. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. No, we're neighbors. Look out for we're each neighbors. other. Look out for each other. And stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Don. I think that's a fake name. Fake name. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call. Could they be Maisie Cartwright? You folks have my new number, right? It's nine one one. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks. All right. Call. 
This is Forrest Nash, and you're Forrest Nash. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend no. stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to uh, do. He? Please help me. Who is he? What's his name? Uh, is he still is he breathing? Still breathing? Take a breath. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place, but we heard this screaming all of a sudden. He started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? All right, all right, as you do. Was it a woman? Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. Don't be yelling at me but now. I'll hang up know. this call. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait. Why didn't she make sure he was dead? Yeah. I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please, he needs to get to the hospital. I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. Why can't you drive? Are you Forest. drunk? The ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. This is great. This is great. This is great. Uh, what's your friend's what's name? What's your friend's name, Casey? Jason. Jason, Jason Parker. Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach. No, no, and Jason he Parker his here. Leg when he was on the ground and his... Oh, the mask is still there in his leg. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Man, we Don't need some, like, Gabriel's suspense now. disco Switch music. You know two. what I'm saying? Oh, line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Dang, you're Hi, quick to talk. Nash from we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something. Give us some tips. He's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. No. Me neither. Uh, I used to. Seven. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. Great. You can handle that. Yeah! No, we don't have much choice. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Mm -hmm. Lay him down. Mm -hmm. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? Uh-huh. If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. Rule number one, baby. He's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. Plugging it up. Secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It well, makes sense, that's though. why you're not a doctor, Peggy. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. All right, now I lost. Uh, are you sure you can't stay? <laughs> I'm getting lost. I hope you're taking it all in, Peggy. Doing my best. If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Okay. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. All right. All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. I wonder why. Maybe because like more blood loss. I don't. I don't get that. Or maybe the warmth of the blood. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Okay. Good luck. All, All right. right. Casey still on line one. Casey. Casey. Hello. Hello. Forrest, are you there? 
I am. This is Force Nash. Uh, we're on our. <laughs> we're on our own. I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. Let's go, Jason. Bleeding. As he does. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? Yes. Uh, no. Don't touch it. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Yes. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. That, see, that's the smartest thing you've said. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Uh, we need to secure the knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer, some cloth on the hood of the car, and what else? I guess I've got my jacket. Laundry on the dryer? Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Is this over okay. the dryer so maybe that's clean? Looks like I'm gonna have to buy you some new whites, Jason. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, I hope those were clean. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I put pressure on his stomach again. Oh, I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Now? Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right, give me a second. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. Aww. What, Peggy? What? What? We're in the middle of a disaster. What, Peggy? What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. No, she's not right. We need to focus she's on one life at a time. I can't do multiple lives. Right I've already killed three. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Uh, she can't drive. Uh, could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped, skipped it. it didn't you? I, never mind. So, look at that. You could have saved the day. First aid course help us. Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah. Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, I don't see it. But I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. I don't see it's 25 Nancy Drive. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. What now? <sighs> it's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Here we go. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. Peggy! I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, oh man! I'm talking about. I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. Mm hmm. You put them in a computer and they do something. Yep. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Yeah, I'm not stupid, anyway, Peggy. Reggie decided that the future is floppy, and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Girl, how many Thanks, keys man. you gotta slide down under the door? I just have to look around. Why don't I just speak to you face to face? 
I added the B word just for the time being, you know. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. All right, all right, thank you. Oh man. It's not opening. What? Lock all the doors in the station. All right, so this is the last door that she has a key for. So where is it? Is it downstairs? What? I, uh, okay, I wasn't paying attention. I thought it was going to be close by to the thing. So none of these are it. Hey! Okay. Okay, sure. Sure, Peggy. Sure. She just don't want to see me. She don't want to see me face to face. She don't like me. It's not through here. No. So, I mean, there is plenty of locked doors down here. Oh, oh my gosh, that fan scared me. I thought someone was just standing there. Hoo hoo. We've already been there. We've already been there. May- oh, is this private? Hello? Yes, it is. Alright. Like I need a four-digit code. Oh man, there's so much. First aid to the injured. Is she by- Hey, he did it. Why don't we call him? And then another map. Oh, look at the drawing of the rocket. That's cute. Uh, anything else? Hey, Peggy is on there. Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post-it notes. Uh, ask Jeannie where those tapes are. It's been weeks now. Overdue. Overdue. Oh, there's a floppy. Um... Axe forever. Need to write pitch document. Good title. Bring back original protag and villain. Oh, protagonist. I'll steal all the sticky notes. <laughs> In the trash. Um, okay. What is this? Neon dream? Exclusive? It's all about the he said, she said, babe. Wow. Oh, oh, it's her. Alright. Alright, so we got a floppy. Put the floppy in. D cuts top uh, secret. Pizza delivery killer who kills with a pizza cutter. Free slice on me. Terrifyingly, there's never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe we should write him as the final girl's boyfriend. Protagonist is a college student, Megan. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful, and lactose intolerant. <laughs> Takes place on 1107. Very important date for the town. A uh, great goose gathering event where a large number of geese appear suddenly and save the town from starvation. Need to kill off Megan's support network through the movie. Maybe partner with Ponchi's Pizza for the launch. One out of ten orders just receive a pizza cutter and tickets to the movie. That's funny. 1107 maybe? 1107. Let's go. Floppies. Hole. Uh, personal file. John. Oh, do we have to go through all this? Ooh. Peggy. Is there one on Clive? Wait, there's not a single one on Clive. There's Barbara. There's Bradley. There's Karen. Well, we don't want to read about her. Let's read about Pegster. Oh, there's another sticky note on here. Remember, Reggie Jr.'s birthday is 9-10, not 10-9. <laughs> Last year was a disaster. Wow, you can't even remember your son's birthday. Um, take this out. Let's read about Miss Lovely. Let's see here. Hey, Peggy. I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. <gasps> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Right, I'm sorry. I need she was born in 1959. I can read the rest of this later. And what, it's 87 right now? So she's like in her 20s, right? Uh, I've never seen somebody... Jeff with Joe. Wait, I've never seen somebody gel with everybody as quickly as Peggy. Uh, sometimes I wonder if Peggy secretly wants her own show. She hasn't been shy about getting involved in the calls on the screen. Sometimes it feels as though Forrest could just leave for a coffee mid-call and nobody would know. Uh, yeah. Alright, so nothing really that tasty for her. Um, how about... I don't know, let's just start picking them off. 
Uh, Mr. John Hedges. What about you, John? I never froze up so I this that's the first time I got scared and froze oh my gosh that was terrifying I hate that John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during his course I know he was a war medic but it was station policy to send everybody regardless John apparently has a bunch of medical equipment at, oh this is a perfect guy here we go uh, that he procured from the military at the end of his service is that legal do I need to report oh come on don't be like that Spoke to John again about eating his free samples that Brad gets sent for his reviews. He said he stopped, but he says that the last three items, too, or the last three times, too. Is it un-American to reprimand a war vet? Alright, uh, 14, Nancy Drive. Here we go. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Yes. Yes, uh, I think I know who to call. I think I know who our best bet oh, is to Oh, man, that knocking chase. scared me. Uh, good work. Who should I... Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Force Nash. He's shocking. Did he have booze? He's going to shock. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Casey, calm down. You've done She's so everything sweet. right. I, I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Uh, elevate his legs. Casey, I need you to elevate. Got to move that legs. blood around. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Stay, stay with me. I'm just gonna move you. This might hurt. Okay. I propped his legs up on some boxes. All right. You had no you could have told me. Do you have anything you could use? Your jacket. Yeah. I still have some laundry next to me. I'll wrap him in some blankets. Just give me a second. What about your jacket? Oh, he's alive still. Sorry, sorry. Jason sleeps there with bandages. Sh should I get him new ones? Or oh god. You put him on top of the old ones. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. <laughs> He's not gonna die. He's gonna be fine. Be strong. Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Meanwhile, I'm gonna read about me. Okay. Uh. Blacklisted. Why am I blacklisted? Uh, John. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person. We don't have the show have. budget to pair him with Karen. I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. Hey, he didn't say anything about a hoarder. Five, four, he's just keeping medical two, equipment, zero, good supplies. Seven, three, five. John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, this is a work emergency and I can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. Uh, no, this is important. The medical emergency, somebody has been stabbed. The whistling man is back. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man. Yeah, literally, you just had all three. You just—he's badly hurt, and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, you were not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I haven't been called on for over ten years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 
25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. We'll grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he died on my watch. Dang! We're back going to work oh, already. Right on your way. Muscle memory. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Oh, oh, uh, how's he now? What now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're in a spot. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Hello, Casey. John Hester. I'm here about Jason. Please let me in. Aw. Let him in! He's here to help! Guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't need to worry. We've got this from here. Yay! Another one saved! I'll call you back later. I have to go now. Oh my gosh, another one saved. Holy cow. I hope he's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be uh, alright. The show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Everything's gonna be alright. I'm just gonna put these back. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. Gosh, what was that banging? There was no reason to be banging in my ear like that. That literally froze me up. I don't think I've froze up. Like, usually when I'm scared, I scream. As we all know, whenever I play scary games, but dude, freezing up, I didn't know what to do. I was waiting for like someone to just come in and then I scream, I guess. Alright. Hello. The Nash is back. Be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Oh man. Alright, ready. That was a great break. Hey. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through too. Alright, through okay, for us. Two? shut the music oh. off. I ain't shutting crap off, lady. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Morris, it's me, Roller Ricky. Hey, Ricky. Oh, and Max is here, too. Aw. Hey. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Aw, oh, we're good, man. Thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you. See, saving boy. Ricky matters more than all the ones that we didn't save today. Just saying. Maybe something for the K-Fan Halloween party. All right, everyone. Let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Yeah. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Oh, T. Let's go. Did you see or hear anything during the attack earlier? Not exactly. You see, man, uh... Jason know each other? You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He's a gnarly offensive lineman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they call me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. Oh. Okay. Tell me about it. What was George like? I didn't know him for long, man. Sad to say, we had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat beat out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? No. Uh... Ricky, listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before, or see her after that. I never even got her name, man. Dang. I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she look like? Please, bean? tell us anything you remember. She looked I like a lima bean. A girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party bean? didn't last long. 
What happened? We were just having a good time, and then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up, saw a goddamn missing man in the trees. Bean. so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning. So. I'm guessing it was <gasps> the night. Bean? I'm so stuck on Bean. The whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died. I'm gonna keep this. I always felt like oh. if anyone deserved to die. Give me this. Mm. Aw, don't say that, Ricky! Ricky, don't say that! It wasn't your fault! Maybe if you had to run? Jeez! No, it wasn't your Ricky. fault. Ricky's the most wholesome one fault. out of this entire thing. He hasn't really no, lied or anything. I know that now, ma'am. Took a long time to learn, but... Yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank, Thank you, Ricky. You, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, ma'am. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone line. Have a good night, Ruler Ricky. Oh. Night, Ricky. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in. Bean. But hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time what? for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Ah, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. <gasps> Hello? Oh my gosh, finally! Sounds like it's been a busy night. Took you four hours, actually. It's Leslie, our 911 operator. Let's go, Leslie! Anderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. Woo! We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. Uh, anyway. Oh! Little connection there. It's been a long night. Ever since you found Sheriff Matthews, it's only gotten worse. Yeah, I killed three it's been people. A long night. Well, it shouldn't be too much longer now. I'm glad I got through to you. I wanted to let you all know what's going on. I made it to Henderson. Yep. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines, and they had no idea what was happening. Wow. After I told them, well. Their sheriff sent a goddamn squad back with me to stop this. Boot scoot and boogie! Great news! That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he... How she... How the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot. But we need your help. Okay. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town. But if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. All right. Uh, haven't we helped enough? Gallows Creek is too big. Uh, well, there's no reason to be argumentative. What do you need? What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. Yeah. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Okay. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. Alright, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's interview of a lifetime. <laughs> anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. All right. Take care. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It's 
Sounds like this is almost over. <sighs> We're nearly through this. Let's get back on air. I don't think it's going to be that easy. It's nice to think, Peggy, but I don't reckon Dawn is going to give up without a fight. She probably won't give up without a fight, no. But neither will we. Now, let's get you back into the arena, champ. Man, are we missing? I turn the music off. Are we missing anything? Like, I'm just hoping that we aren't missing like Ready any good information. Now. Welcome back to the stream with me, Boris Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. We're it's getting better. Over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. All right. Good evening, caller. This is Boris Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. Let's Joe, go. Is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. Let's go. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. Peggy. To to the hospital. This is your move. Thank do you it, Peggy. So much. Peggy. If you have been there, then. Peggy, do your move, Peggy. God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. All right, Peggy's on the of move course, for it. Casey. We're just happy he's okay. She's a little bit John, sad, I Casey, guess. You two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us. Whatever he's up for. It. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? This Forrest. Dang, it's Forrest Nash. The one and only. I hope you're feeling better. <laughs> it's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach. And your leg. There's a knife in my leg. Yep. Uh, John gave me something to take the edge off. John gave you them expired oh, drugs. I might feel even better than either of you. Hey, hey, hey. Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. Yeah. I will. St. Gabriel's. Before uh, that, I, I needed to call you. Oh. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there. Oh, yep. Yes, the whistling man's still out there. Why do you ask? You know something about the whistling man, don't you? Yeah. I know. Can we talk about what happened earlier? Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. Spoke to Ricky. Was he? Is he all right? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. No! I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Okay. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Bean. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said the thing, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just on like he'd never existed uh what happened did you who killed george <sighs> what happened what happened that night i went along with the stupid prank that's what whistling night some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers we decided to plan a party had a role. I was the stabbed friend. The party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. Dang. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again oh tonight. Oh, my gosh. Before. Bean? Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? Oh, M. 
We got Marie Campbell How do still. We get it back on? Marie Campbell? An emergency broadcast? Okay. Fair point. It's in the storage area in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. Ah. Gonna be bad. Ooh, this gonna be bad. <gasps> oh, it looks so worse. So much worse out there. Okay, so right back here. Frick. Oh no, it's gonna be so bad. Oh, gosh, I hope we're not missing any information. I really hope that we got everything that we possibly could to do this right. Huh. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? I don't know, but I hate it. Don't hurt me. I'm just a innocent boy. Is this it? No, that ain't no generator. Oh, is this that it? That must be it. Okay, I'm not missing any useful information, am I? Gosh, I hope I did it. Here we go. Boom. We've got power. <gasps> oh my gosh. The whistling there. I need to warn Peggy. Oh, we're dead. Oh, we're dead. Oh, we're dead. I'm gonna die. You have no reason to kill me. I mean, I did sabotage your kill, but that's your only reason? They're above us. I hear them. I hear them. M. The only thing that we saw in the yearbook was M. Marie Campbell? Campbell? Bean. The bean part. I don't get what we can- What the hell? <gasps> Oh my gosh, I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Hello. I'm sweating. Uh What? Why is it locked? Uh Why is it locked? Oh no. Uh tight. Can I close this? Hey. Peggy. Where did you go? What? What? Oh no! Oh, did I miss it? Oh, hey! This can't be happening. Wow! Look at you! You don't look. You don't really have like a femme strong body. Uh. I call. Mic check, mic check. Hold on, I just want to look around here if you don't mind. I mean, you kind of locked me. Oh, look at that. She's got a nice thing to play with, too. Oh, look at her setup. Wow. Did Don press the Peggy button? Did, did she want me to hit it on my end? I don't think that's Don, bro. Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great. And a love M. M. Anything referencing to a bean? Bean. All right. Uh, hey! How's it going? Uh, where's Peggy? Where do you want? What do you want? Good to talk to you again, Forrest. You know, I've really you enjoyed your mouth. the chats tonight. I guess we've had some moments. My favorite was when Ricky ran you out of the rink. Let's go! You sure did get me then, Forrest. Where's Peggy? Have some patience, Forrest. No! It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. No! But not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. Gosh, I hope I answer right. 
Uh, yeah, let's just keep at Let's play dumb. What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? Oh, I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with oh, a man. guest. And the one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth. And... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. Yeah, there's two people. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows. Because is that a mask it. at the bottom, too? Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallus Creek to my boy. Oh, your son. Hi, Henry. <laughs> hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. Nice to meet you. Wave hi. Don't mind him. He's just shy. Yeah, I'm sure. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Mm. Did you say barrel? That are you? Let me just get this mask off. Mooney? There we go. Who's Mooney? Marie Cabell? There it is. George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, get punched. No, not Dawn, huh? Quiet, Teddy. Where is this going? Where are you going Keep playing dumb. Us? Get all the answers you can. Hehe, <laughs> this is so fun looking. George that night. This night. Twenty years ago. Listen to me. You Dude, he keeps spinning. Ah. You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Girl boss! Meanwhile, Forrest Queen Slay. Chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Uh, I'll do it. Sure. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. He is going to get himself killed. Ew. Ew, why was it wet? Now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. Ew, flies. And that's why I want you to interview us. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Interview you. All right. I can do that. This is Forrest Nash. Drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie are we talking is, in the out loud about this, or are we in our head? Because you know she can hear Don't, us. We'll start with you. Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was twenty years ago. It was probably the most traumatic day for everyone. Do you want to die, hit a Marie? Teddy. Be honest with me, or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. Dude, the way how he talks. He what talks like hell? he has a big jaw. God damn it. Okay. Is he giving eye contact? Our no. first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the uh, night. The night Mooney vanished. I don't know who Mooney is. Whistling night. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean. Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. Hmm. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I. Uh. Keep talking, Teddy. We 
went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky. Ricky. Our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Yeah, Is doubt. So? Yes. Doubt. He came apart one day. Some people do. I'm raging. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. Rage. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So I helped him keep himself together. You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. Oh. And the whistling man. <laughs> Screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Uh, did you ask Ricky? Nobody. Ricky doesn't know. Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. Yeah. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just Man. a stupid prank. Uh, just a prank? J just, just, just a prank? still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... God damn it! There goes your nose! And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Oh. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding. Why are you going to tell her this? Well, I guess because so she gets the sense of being, like, of losing. Oh. Well. Shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. Oh, man. Oh, man. Enough about him. Uh, who was it? What happened next? How did you feel? How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. I felt small. I no, don't feel bad. I'm literally going to start feeling bad for this. Who was under the mask? Who was under the mask, Marie? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Oh. Laughing away. The one at the gas station. And he stopped. What was he looking at? <laughs> he was looking at George. Teddy. Right? What happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George fell off whistling point. Oh, man. How did you know? Why did he fall? Where were you? How did you know what happened? I saw it. God damn it! I just chased him up there and he kept backing up. Oh, when I that's saw him about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar. It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. I do believe. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Yeah, there you go. That was a ball kick right there. No 
one's going to believe this. After all you did. I believe her, then why cover up even if you didn't push him? Even if you didn't push him. Even if you didn't push him. You still chased him to his death. Yeah. Someone not getting a choke. You can stop. There's a realization you where you can stop. But if you really thought that way, why the cover up? My future was at stake. Ash. Your future matters more than a life. Like people like us are bred for bigger things. Wow. I'm going to be the mayor of this town for it. Doubt. And then governor. And then no one would want you. What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke. Gone wrong. It's such an excuse. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? He wasn't a blip. George was a blip? He wasn't a blip. It wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up in there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. Yep. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek. <sighs> My gosh. Uh, hit him again. Answer the question. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes. Okay. We own the most of the town. That's it, then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the it's so messed up. instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews, too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... Even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no, that coward killed the story. But Maurice Russell is dead now. Oh, man. When is the... Will the killing end? We already know when. You've been through hell. This has to stop. When will the killing end? When all of them are dead. End. When does it end? You can't kill the world. This has to stop sometime. She's got a list. It has to. It never should have started. I shouldn't have pushed my George off the cliff. I should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here. Our George and I have first met. Wait a sec. The winning throw football field? It's not the roller rink. It can't be the football field before join the football team. The school gym? I just feel like we should have got more info on this. Oh, that is a mask with the mouth open. I thought that was like half a mask. Weird. Weird. You look so weird. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. It's been so long since I've seen your face. I'm worried you would be Dang. Come. Marie. Oh my god. I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Uh, sister, what the heck? Someone explain? Will 
someone please explain to me what's happening? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Yeah. Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out. That my sister is the whistling man. Cool. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. <laughs> and I just... Got tackles. <gasps> you should have said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This has to be uh. a lot for you. I just... Dang. I begged mom and dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. You know, stay quiet. They only really cared when they learned I'd been with George. And, and oh. Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. Oh, they're dead. Since they're dead and gone, well. Five hour stream, you're once again insane. I was not expecting this game to be five hours, I'm not gonna lie. Um, is that why you attacked Eugene? I, wait. What? Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Eugene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night, too. Oh my that gosh. Killed in a bus accident. And since only their child was left. Murray. Bro, they went for the child because of that? Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. I approve! Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. I approve! Keep your mouth shut. No, I approve! She kept the card from you. She, I got she it! Kept it here right here! What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. Well, I. We remember! Let's go! Yes! No, Henry, stay! Henry, stay! Dude, you're shooting. Hold on. Hey, hey. Hold on. Hey, let me out. I'm stuck. Let's go, Peggy. You're alive. Hey, Zara. I need you to look Peggy survived. Peggy could die. That's crazy. Yes. She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. Woo! It's over, Forrest. We did it. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben. Forrest Nash. Forrest Nash. Good night and good morning. It's been a scream. Let's make tomorrow. Good night and good morning. I like that one more. Good night. And good morning. And good morning. Let's go. Now let me out. Breakthrough. Forrest Nash survived the whistling man. I can die? Really? Aww, Murphy! Eugene! And Maurice. Ah, where are we? Ooh. And there's Ponty's Pizza. Monty's Pizza. Ponty's. Ponty's, right? Ponty's Pizza. Oh, nice. All right, so hey, that's us. That doesn't pay. Peg Peggy did not look like that. Man, Eugene, that sucks. And there's Roller Ricky. So Roller, so Eugene's parents were in on it during the accident, but then since his parents died, he didn't do any. 
he was just wow. That's see, that's messed up. We saved so many people though. Peggy bad? You think Peggy's bad? I think it's crazy that she's in on. She seems like she's gonna have like a bad arc now, or like I I can't imagine mentally knowing that your sister is a serial killer. You know. Tammy Chad. There's Jason. And there's Teddy Gallows Jr., that son of a gun. Holy cow, this is the loudest thing ever. Like, that is so loud. Oh, gosh. All right. I'll leave it like this. Uh, five hours it took me. Holy cow. I was not expecting to be on here for five hours. I literally was planning to do other games too, but I guess we will save that for another time. This is a great stream though, this is a great game, a great time. I really did think I was going to 100% it, because I've seen this before, but obviously even if you see it, you can still make the dumb decisions, because it's been a while since I've seen it. But yeah, this is great. Oh, uh, uh oh, is it going to be a repeat? Might be a repeat event. I wonder if that's mom then. If that's uh, if that's Bean. If that's Bean, that makes sense. But um, yeah, I want to thank everybody for joining in, saying hello, and I hope everyone has a good rest of their Saturday. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for chatting with me and experiencing this game with me. And I will see you next time. So see you guys. Thank you for the great stream. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs>